Jack, sir. <laughs> All praises to the most high, ayy. Ay, these rappers' music so dry. Ay, ay, homos hate the Bible cause they're gay. Gay, the Torah is forever. I obey. Ay, our praises to the Most High. Ay, ay, keep the Bible close by. Ay, ay, Hebrew and you know why. Ay, ay, our praises to the Most High. Ay, ay, the road to redemption it is only straight and narrow. Crystals for protection is sorcery like tarot. I know you're who will got me cause his eye is on the sparrow. So harden your heart to the truth like Pharaoh. Following the Torah is not religion, it's decision. Yahushua the Messiah never called his people Christians. School the Easter Bunny, Saint Nick in these traditions. Serving all these false gods like those damn Egyptians. Your heart is not repentant, then how can you be forgiven? Even until death, I still hold my position. Trusting in Yahua if I'm broke or I'm in prison. Endure to the end, I only go off what is written. Hey, I'm praising to the most high, ay, ay, these rappers' music so dry, ay, ay, homos hate the Bible cause they gay, gay, the Torah is forever, I obey, ay, our praises to the most high, ay, ay, keep the Bible close by, ay, ay, Hebrew and you know why, ay, ay, our praises to the most high, ay, ay. Hey, yeah, sir. love you know 
It's it's like a, a flower that blooms in your heart that does not stop blooming. It keeps up. It continues to bloom. And that that love that's blooming is for Yah and His people. It's very different. And for for Gentile, that is its own reward. It truly is. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Look. Hey. So many black lives scattered and then black lives matter. Cern summoning demons with that anti-matter. They censoring the truth, all the lies that I shattered. And these labels getting paid when they sacrifice these rappers. Black lives scattered and then black lives matter. Cern summoning demons with that anti-matter. They censoring the truth, all the lies that I shattered. And these labels getting paid when they sacrifice these rappers. Hey, they really hate the truth. We the people of the book. The evil will mislead you when this Hebrews got them shook. Who else do you know? Fits the prophecies of scripture we are yasharel bible paints a clear picture the lies don't hold truth and they fear make them quiver they treat us so salty and their tears will taste bitter the truth beat the brakes off these snakes when they sliver times 105 15 on whoever laid the finger what's one way to kill us better ask margaret singer and justice is a spark that will rouse up our anger and when we speak so boldly we can quiet all the chatter abortion kill our babies in the most violent manner your ooh is in your usha because he is the only answer the the Negro is the Hebrew and your hatred is the cancer. This song to my people scattered to the four corners. We fed up with these Khazars, feel like dogs being cornered. So many black lives scattered and the black lives matter. Cern summoning demons with that anti-matter. They censoring the truth for the lies that I shattered. And these labels getting paid when they sacrifice these rappers. Black lives scattered and the black lives matter. Cern summoning demons with that anti-matter. They censoring the truth for the lies that I shattered. And these labels getting paid when they sacrifice these rappers. Now, what my ancestors did 400 years ago, when they took the, your African ancestors into slavery, they rewrote your Bible. And in doing so, they changed your Messiah's name. And they are keeping the black man mentally enslaved to the white master, Jesus Christ. That is not your Messiah. That is not your king. The true king is the black Hebrew king, Yahushua. And his father is Yahuwah. And his father's spirit is Ruach Akodesh. I'm really going to offend white people. I cannot speak this around white people. They become very vicious. They step outside of scripture and they first come at you. Accusing you with sins. Well, hello there, Satan. Hello there, Satan. He is the accuser. And so you have no sin? Please. You are the greatest sinner. Our ancestors are the greatest sinners. Our fathers today are the greatest sinners. Um, I hope they don't delete this. I hope this gets out. Um, <clears throat> not, not many white people will accept this. And the ones that do know it are not going to tell you. Because they fear you and they fear your Messiah and your king. Because when your king comes, you will become the kings and queens of the nations. And they don't want that. Well, our father sold Israel for bread. And that's the truth and that's the fairness in it, period. So, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a thief. I'm, no. Or a killer or... And it's unfortunate that that runs through my blood, but the Messiah can cleanse anything, so I'm not going to try to dwell on that. I'm just going to keep on speaking his truth because it seems the more I speak it, the more he's cleaning me out. So, um, I hope this awakens or leads somebody to the correct well to get the right drink. It is very quenching. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs>
in the chat. I hope you guys are doing well. It's good to be back here. Uh, another Shabbat to gather together on this Kadash Yum, this Kadash day of Yahuwah. The Father created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And we honor him. We honor his creation. We honor his set-apart day, and we also honor his beloved son. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to my mods. We've got Tracy Batya in the building. All praises to the Most High. We got our Ak uh, Amiya Yaki Yada in the building. All esteem to y'all. Oh, thank you so much for the uh, for the compliment, family. Much love to you. Uh, let's see. We have Christopher Roller and his wife Danielle in the building. Shabbat Shalom, family. Good to see you. We have our beloved moderator, uh, Lady Yaudi, in the building. Shabbat Shalom, beloved sister. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to shout out my moderators here. Uh, did I miss anybody? Praying for an Ali Shah. Shabbat Shalom, sis. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Am I missing anybody here? I'm looking for Markia. I don't think she's here yet. Tashara, child of Yahuwah, beloved daughter of Zion. Is here with us on this Shabbat. Thank you for showing up, sis. We appreciate you. Much love to you. And we're going to shout out everybody else in the chat before we jump into this. Uh, Tiffany is in the building. Shabbat Shalom, sis. Good to see you. We've got our Ak Frank Arborek in the building. All praises to the Most High Yahua. Khan, hallelujah. Hua. Uh, we have uh, Maya Yah Johnson. Shabbat Shalom, Mashvaka Barak Yahua. Who is Yahusha? Yahua is Yahusha in the flesh. Shabbat Shalom, sis. Good to see you. We've got that Hebrew guy, uh, Hebrew guy. All praises to the Most High, Yah. Hallelujah, Hua. All praises to the Most High. We have a shout out to Catmosphere in the building. Shabbat Shalom, good to see you. We've got our Ak, Rylan Abya, Kal Yada Haya, La Yahua. All praises unto Yahua. Hallelujah, Hua. Kal Kabai, Yahua. All esteem to Yahua. All right, family. We've got, I love my fro. I love my fro. Pardon me. I love my fro in the building. Shalom, mashpaka, hallelujah, hua, yada, yahua, all esteem to yahua. We love you, sister. Thank you for joining us. We have Queen Raya Israel in the building. All praises to the most high. We have Nisi Abya in the building. All praises to yahua. All right, family. We're going to jump into this. Markia is not here yet, but she will be with us very, very shortly. And shout out to everybody that I did not get a chance to shout out that's going to be joining us as we continue with this study. Um, real quick, I want to, uh, before we jump into this, I want to real quick mention something here. Um, our sister um, has a channel. Uh, let me see. Hidden Ones. I told you guys about her before. She has a channel that she did that is for children. Children in the Abari Yasharili Truth, she has made a channel for, and it's called Torah Train Kids. So I'm going to just real quick share the link. Uh, I told her I would be happy to share it. So I'm going to just share that channel with you guys. Give me one second. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, and then I'll show you guys this real quick. Hold on one second here. Okay, so she basically does this channel for you know the the uh, everybody that's in the Abari truth. If you have children, you know young young children, and they're just trying to understand the ways of Yahuwah, this is a good channel for you to check out. So I'm gonna just share my screen just so you can see it. Now she just started this channel. Okay, so it's called Torah Train Kids. She's got these little animated characters, and she's building it up. But I wanted to give a shout out to her. Like I said, she's our sister from, um, you know, these are the some of the videos. And like I said, she's building it up. So I just want to give a shout out to her. And I'm also going to uh, post the link to her channel here in the chat just for children that are coming into this understanding and just want to be able to uh, have animated videos that kind of depict our people the way that they are. That's a good channel for you to go to. All right. So. We're going to jump into this. Um, the study for today is the great and terrible Alua. Now, I felt that this was important because the last study we did, we talked about Yahuwah's love for Yasharal. But we also have to discuss his vengeance, his righteous judgment, 
Because unfortunately, and I've said this before, Christianity has watered down the most high. They have watered down Yahushua HaMashiach. And I always tell people, the greatest form of love for Yahua is obedience. Marquiaz in the building. Shabbat Shalom says, good to see you, says, good to see you. The greatest form of love is obedience to the most high, keeping his laws, keeping his commandments. The reason why this world does not want to keep his laws and commandments, but will go run and celebrate pagan Easter like they're about to do while totally ignoring um, Pesach, which, by the way, is coming up Monday night, Monday evening, sunset. OK, so if you have not yet had a chance to get everything you need for Pes for Pesach, just keep in mind that it is going to be Monday at sunset. OK, don't want to miss it. Um, So we want to teach you guys about his wrath. Because I hear a lot of people talk about, oh, you know, you always love you always love. And he is he absolutely is love. You know what I'm saying? He is love. But unfortunately, people are not understanding that he is also wrathful to those who reject him, reject his ways and everything that is written in the scriptures. So what you what side of him you experience is completely up to you. It's completely up to you what you want to experience when it comes to the most high. He obviously has redemption plan for his people salvation for his people and those nations that cleave to us. There is a beautiful story about inheriting eternal life, inheriting the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Your pain, your sadness, your depression, everything you've experienced will be no more. I like to call the kingdom or the shaman in the heavens, the place of no more, no more crying, no more pain, no more struggle, no more oppression. However, if you reject his son, if you reject his people, if you reject his Torah, reject his laws, reject his commandments, there's a place of destruction. There's a place of torment. You don't want to be on the side of that. Okay. The day of your is what is mentioned in the book of Joel or you all, the book of Abad Yahuwah Obadiah. And he has preordained a set apart day, a day that he has chosen for himself, that his wrath will be poured out on the nations who've oppressed us, as well as those unrepentant Yashualim or Israelites. OK, so let's jump into this, man. All right. So the great and terrible Alua. In our last study, we looked at the love or ha Ahab, the love of the Most High Yahuwah for his people. But in this study, we will look at his terrible and destructive might and power and why you should fear him. You must fear him. And fear, when I when I mention fear or yara, the Abari word for fear is yara. So when I say yara yaua, I'm saying fear yaua. Okay. So understand that this fear is not to a sense of like, you know, I, I fear him. So I'm just gonna just, you know, be afraid of him. You fear him. So you do what he tells you to do. It's just like when my mom, you know what I'm saying, and she wanted to whoop my behind because I did something I wasn't supposed to do. I know what that thing I'm going to do is going to cause to get my behind whooped. Therefore, because I fear that she's going to discipline me in a harsh way because of that thing or because of that punishment, I am going to obey her words. OK, it's the same thing with the most high. All right. This is not to scare you, but to help you understand why obedience is a must, okay? So you repent. Repentance is always something I preach on this channel. Repentance is always something we must do. But once you repent, then comes obedience. Obedience is accepting his son and following the ways of Yahushua the Messiah. Because some people say, I'm free from the law. I'm free from the commandments. Okay, but see, that's the problem. Jesus is a false messiah because the concept of Christianity is Jesus. But Jesus teaches you the law is done away. Therefore, you don't need to keep the law. You just need to love, 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 love. However, Yahushua, the Messiah, the Hebrew, the Abari, Yashua Ali, the Hebrew Israelite of Yashua, 
that was sent to redeem us, he taught the Torah. Everything he he did was about the Torah. Yahuwah sent his son to show his people how keeping Torah is not a hard thing to do when you apply your hearts and your minds to the ways of the Most High. Therefore, we have to follow the ways of Yahusha and his teachings, which are Torah. When you accept the Messiah, you accept his blood, you become an heir to the covenant, or you become an heir to the inheritance of the covenant. However, to gain that inheritance, you must adhere to the ways of the covenant, which is Torah. Okay, so if a person thinks that they can be lawless and they're going to inherit the kingdom, that's foolishness. Every covenant has terms and conditions that must be followed in order for that person to inherit, to gain that inheritance. All right, it's very, very simple. When it comes to you, oh, he is merciful and he is love, but he's also vengeful and a righteous Alua. Anytime the Most High judges, it's out of righteousness because he is righteous. But the thing about it is he's so loving and so merciful, he always warns us before judgment comes. As far as this whole eclipse thing we've been talking about, this is a sign. This is a warning of what's to come. And we have to be able to discern when he is warning us, okay? He's a righteous Alua, and you don't want to be on the receiving end of his wrath. Christianity has pushed this false love doctrine and watered down Yahua, making people take his mercy for granted. And in this study, we will prove why this doctrine is dangerous. And this is why, like I said, you have so much lawlessness in Christianity because they don't fear the most high. They've been taught love, 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 like his love does not overshadow or like his love overshadows his righteous judgment. If you believe he's love, you also got to believe he's just. This earth that we dwell on is his. What he says goes. You don't walk into someone's house and then start saying, well, I, I understand you have rules, but I'm going to just do this my way. No, this is his earth. Everything is his. And because he has given you life and given you breath to breathe and has blessed you to see another day, why would you not walk in obedience to him that created you? He has the ultimate authority over everything. And if we truly love him, we're going to follow what he told us to do. It's that simple. Let's keep going. I always tell people understanding Yahuwah comes with reading his word, understanding what he hates and what he loves especially when it comes to his people. Considering the punishments we have endured, you have an obligation of obedience to him 10 times more, Yashua. Because of what our ancestors have done, because we were cursed, because we're in the lands of our captivity, and because the dry bones are awakening, we have to seek him 10 times more. Because our ancestors have truly provoked him to anger. To the other nations who have been grafted into the covenant, this is just important. To, just is just as important to understand as well, since you now have become a spiritual abari, spiritual Hebrew. You must live as one and understand Ha Alua. You have come into covenant with through His Son, because the nations who are grafted in have accepted the blood sacrifice of His Son. It's very important that now that you are a spiritual Hebrew, you understand the Aluwa, who you've come into a covenant with through his son, because the only way to Yahua is through Yahusha, okay? I always say this, but you must be reading the Bible for yourself. I'm gonna say that one more time. You must be reading the Bible for yourself. I'm always here to answer questions. I'm always here to help you understand things. But if you are not reading the word for yourself, a lot of these things will be foreign to you. They will not make sense to you. You must be reading the Bible, okay? This channel is here to provide context and scripture, but your relationship with him, Yahua, and his son, Yahusha, is a personal one, not an interpersonal one one through me or anyone else. So it's about a personal relationship. When you were in Christianity, you went through your pastor. Okay, that was an intrapersonal uh, relationship. 
But when you come into the Abari truth, it's about developing a personal relationship. Because when you really think about it, you think about, you read about the Yashrulim or the Israelites, the ones that were used by Yahuwah had a personal relationship with him in some, in some way, shape or form. And it's important that we understand how important that is as well. Lastly, I will say this. None of us will ever have to experience his wrath if we walk upright and in obedience to him. As a matter of fact, he protects and shields those whom he loves. So if you truly hearken unto his words and walk in his ways, you have nothing to fear. He has not once spared his people of destruction, neither will he do it for the other nations. The purpose of this lesson is to help you fear him. For fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And this is Mashalim or Proverbs 9, verse 10. We will start this study with the many times his wrath has been poured out on Yasharah. Because always remember, our ancestors' disobedience is what has had us in these many conditions we are in today. As so-called black people, um, his vengeance will always be worse for us because we are his people. We will always get it worse than the other nations because he came to our people directly. That's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Hundreds of years of slavery, oppression, poverty, injustice, racism, hatred, mockery, disease, sickness, broken homes, and unparalleled deletion should be enough to make you want to walk upright as Yahuwah has commanded you, Yasharal. I mean, aren't y'all sick? Aren't we all just sick of just what we've been dealing with? This doesn't change until we return to him. That is the whole purpose of this chastisement. That we will get so sick of what we've experienced and what we deal with that we will say we have to return to our father. We cannot keep blaming our ancestors for the decisions we continue to make that are against our father. Yes, our ancestors made some mistakes. Yes, the Bible says that this curse was put up on these curses, plural, were put up on us because of our ancestors. But now that we're in knowledge of the truth, we have no excuse to keep on blaming this on what Yasharal did in the past. What they did in the past, once you know the truth of Yahu Yahusha, you understand the Torah, you understand the ways of the Most High, you have to walk upright. There's no excuse to blame your ancestors because you chose to forsake the Most High, because you choose to, you know, uh, break the Shabbat and not keep the feast days, or you choose to marry nations you're not supposed to marry, or you choose to, you know, uh, fornicate or whatever the case is, setting up idols, following the ways of Babylon whatever it might be. That's not our ancestors' fault. That's your fault because now you are in knowledge of the truth. Therefore, you will be held accountable, okay? Do we not realize that obedience, acceptance of Yahusha, and keeping Torah is the only way out of this? This should be very clear by now, Yashara. Yahua and his son Yahusha are the only ones who can save us. Seeking justice from a system that was built to work against you does nothing. Protesting does nothing. Voting does nothing. It does not end until we realize our power is not in ourselves, but in our Alua, Yahua. Return to the covenant of Yahua and accept his son. It's very simple. So we've been voting for years. We've been protesting for years. We've been talking about police brutality for years and it's gotten worse. Because Yahuwah said that no man shall redeem you when you go into captivity. So if we're seeking some political leader, if we're seeking some celebrity, we're seeking some organization to stop these things, which are spiritual, by the way, sent by the, by the hand of the Most High because of our ancestors' disobedience, man cannot stop what Yahuwah is doing. Therefore. Only he can turn back these curses, not other people, not voting, not Babylonian presidents or anything else. Accepting the blood of the Messiah, being made anew, becoming a new creature and walking upright, grabbing a hold of the covenant and keeping his law, statutes and commandments is how we break from the curses. And I can tell you specifically that I have been freed from these curses 
because I grafted to the covenant and I accepted the Messiah. Give me a one in the chat. And this is specifically for Yashara. If you have seen a difference in your life when it comes to these curses, because to the other nations that might be in here that may not understand the curses, give me a one in the chat. If you have experienced difference in your life ever since you started keeping the laws and commandments, accepted his son, Yahusha, and grafted hold of the covenant. I want to just, I want the, the other nations to see how much has changed in our lives since we came into this covenant and accepted Yahusha. Okay. So let's see. Um, Catmosphere gave me a one. Amiya, Lady Yaudi, Ariyala, Yashara, uh, Kailisi, a number one. Uh, Rylan Batya, one. So you guys, to other nations, you can see that these, our people have changed. We are not under these curses anymore. And now it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not hatred. It doesn't necessarily mean that these nations still don't have you know, uh, 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 anger and a frustration and a hatred towards us, right? But we are not as affected as those of our people who are literally being unalived and deleted every day. Yeah, I have experiences with the police all the time, but am I making it out alive to see another day? Am I making it out alive to have the protection of the most high? Absolutely. Because George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, you know, uh, Tamir Rice, any one of those individuals could have been us. But we have the protection of the Most High because we've come back into the covenant. And that's why I say when you obey, when you obey him, he will shield, he will protect you. Let's keep going. <laughs> Judgment starts with the house of Yashara. All right. So some Abari words to know. The first word is Shafat. Shafat. Okay, so you've got the Sheen, you've got the Pa, and you've got the Tat. That gives you Shafat. So for example, when you read in the book of Joel about Yahua bringing the nations to the valley of Yahushafat, Yahushafat means Yahuwah judges or Yahuwah will vindicate, or Yahuwah will punish. So Shafat means just that, judge, vindicate, or punish, okay? We also had a king named Yahushafat at one point from Yahuda. But that's what Shafat means. It means to judge, vindicate, or punish. The next word is Ka'as, Ka'as, okay? You've got the Kat, you've got the Ayin, and you've got the Samak. That's pronounced Ka'as. Ka'as, and that means to be vexed or be angry. The last word is kasaf, and that's wrath, okay? You've got the kuf, you've got the sad, and you've got the pa. Kasaf, kasaf, which is wrath. All right, so just to remind our people of these curses, what put us in these situations, we're going to just read a few scriptures here reminding us of how important it is to return to the covenant that we don't experience his wrath. Because listen, the Bible says that only two thirds of Yahuda will make it. There is a remnant of Yahuda, meaning that there are unrepented Yashubalim Israelites that will be destroyed along with our oppressors. And you don't want that to be you. Okay, so we're going to read the book of Baruch, chapter 1, 13 through 19. And it says the curses of Dabari and Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 are an example of his wrath. So we're talking about wrath. Those curses are an example of his wrath. And we're going to take a look at that to understand. Now, we're not going to go through the curses in this particular study, but Baruch chapter 1 talks about how these are an example of his wrath. So let's read it. It says, Pray for us also unto Yahuwah, our Lua, for we have sinned against Yahuwah, our Lua, and unto this day, ha -kasaf, okay, the wrath of Yahuwah and his kasaf is not turned from us. And you shall read this Safar or this book, which we have sent unto you to make confession in the house of Yahuwah upon the feast and solemn days. And you shall say to Yahuwah, our Lua, belongs righteousness. But unto us, the confusion of faces, as it has come to pass 
this day unto them of Yahudah and to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim and to our kings and to our princes and to our priests and to our Nabim, our prophets and to our fathers. For we have sinned before Yahuwah and disobeyed him and have not hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah, our Lua, to walk in the commandments that he gave us openly. Since the day that Yahuwah brought our forefathers out of the land of Matzraim or Egypt unto this present day, we have been disobedient unto Yahuwah, our Lua, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Therefore, the evils cleave unto us and the curse which Yahuwah appointed by Moses. This is talking about the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Appointed by Moses, his servant, at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of Egypt to give us a land that flows with milk and honey, like as it is to see this day. So even to this very day that we are reading Baruch in this lesson on this Shabbat, a lot of our people are still under these curses. This is uh, Baruch 2, 11 through 15. And now, oh, Yahuwah Alua Yashara, that has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm and with signs and with wonders and with great power, you have gotten yourself a name as it appears to this day. Yahuwah Alua, we have sinned, we've done wickedly, we've dealt unrighteously in all your ordinances. Let your wrath turn from us. We are but a few left among the heathen where you scattered us. Hear our prayers, O Yahuwah, and our petitions and deliver us for our own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, that all the earth may know you are Yahuwah, our Lua, because Yashara and his posterity is called by your name. All right, continuing on. This is Baruch, first Baruch 2, 11 through 20. Yahuwah, Elua of Yashua, that has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, high arm, and with signs. Hear our prayers, O Yahuwah, and our petitions. Deliver us for your own sake, and give us favor in the sight of them which have led us away, that all the earth may know you are Yahuwah, our Elua, because Yashua and his posterity are called by your name. We just read that. O Yahuwah, look down from your Kadash house and consider us. Bow down your ear, O Yahuwah, to hear us. Open your eyes and behold for the dead that are in your graves, whose souls are taken from their bodies, will give unto Yahuwah neither praise nor righteousness. But the soul that is greatly kaas or angry, which goes stooping and feeble, and the eyes that fell and the hungry soul will give you praise and righteousness. Yahuwah, therefore, we do not make our humble supplication before you, O Yahuwah, our Alua, for the righteousness of your fathers and of our kings. As you have sent out your kashaf, or your wrath, and indignation upon us, you have spoken by your servants, the Nabim, saying, this is uh, Baruch 4, 1 through 11. This is the book of the commandment of Yahuwah and the Torah that endures forever. The Torah that endures forever. So everybody out here saying, oh, you know, the Torah is done away. According to the scriptures, this is why Baruch was one of the books they removed from the Bible. Because it, it, it stresses the importance of the laws of the Most High. Okay? So it says, this is the book of the commandment of Yahuwah and the Torah that endures forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. All they that keep the Torah shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. The Torah is literally life or death. You don't keep the laws and commandments. It's clear what's going to happen to you. That includes the nations grafted in. You are grafted into the nation. You must live as the nation. You must keep the laws and commandments as the nation. And to the Israelites out here telling these nations that they shouldn't keep the Torah, woe unto you. Because Yahuwah has given us a standard of righteousness, which is the Torah. Without the Torah, how will you know what is righteousness and what isn't? Because according to the Bible, transgression of Torah is sin. So if the Torah is done away and the Torah doesn't matter and we don't need to keep the Torah, then what is sin? And this is the deception of Christianity. Okay, let's keep going. Turn you, O Yaqub, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that you may be illuminated. Give not your honor to another, nor the things are profitable unto you and to a strange nation. I've shared this scripture plenty of times before. 
give not your honor, your, your heritage, your birthright to another, nor the things that are profitable unto you to a strange nation. OK, it's very clear. You shouldn't be allowing these other nations to be all like, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Yasharal, too. I'm this, I'm that. It's just like now. I, I talked about this last Shabbat, but I said that a lot of the nations are waking up because they're realizing we're the people of the book. And now all of a sudden they want to claim they're Negro. Now, all of a sudden they're saying it doesn't matter. OK, it didn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to you now because the Messiah wasn't white. It doesn't matter to you because the Israelites are not white. <laughs> Putin done, you know, set, set off the standard. And now the nations are having a reactionary response and they're even claiming, well, you know, I, I, I think my great, great grandfather was black. So I guess I got Jacob's blood in me too. I may not look like it. I'm like, bro, come on, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. <clears throat> Oh, Yashara, happy are we for things that are pleasing to your U are made known unto us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Yashara. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Yahuwah to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Yahuwah. You've forgotten the everlasting Yahuwah that brought you up and have grieved Yahushalayim that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of Yahuwah coming upon you, she said, hearken you that dwell about Zion. Yahuwah has brought you up upon great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting Yahuwah brought upon them with joy. I did nourish them and sent them away with weeping and mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which Yahuwah brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many. For the sins of my children, I am left desolate because they departed from the Torah of Yahuwah. So it's starting to make sense why they've removed these books. There's so much emphasis on keeping these commandments. There's so much being said about keeping the Torah. Let me read the comments before I continue on. Give me a second here. Okay. Uh, Esther says, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom says, I wake up every day excited to show my love by walking in obedience. Exactly. Rinda Rutherford is in the building. Shabbat Shalom says, good to see you. Yes, please hit the like button. Please share the stream. It's very important for people to understand these things, especially Yashara and the nations who cleave. Uh, unapologetically real. Shabbat Shalom, Yetzer and fam. Shabbat Shalom to you. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. I'm reading some more of these comments here. Look like some of these comments are delayed. Give me one second, y'all. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, Shaul Abadia says, Shabbat Shalom, family. Good to see you, Ak. All praises to the Most High. Uh, Praying for our just says, hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button, family. Make sure to hit that like button. It's how we show these algorithms that you know, you're enjoying the content and it will suggest these videos to people who may not know who I am that maybe need to hear this truth, especially our people. Uh, per day living with Yahoo and Yahusha, Shalom says, good to see you. All esteem to the most high. All right. Uh, Maurice Masha says, Shabbat Shalom, the Torah is a light unto our feet. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, and if there's anything that we need to know when it comes to the most high, it's the Torah, how to walk upright how to walk in a way that's pleasing to him. It's all Torah. All right. Continuing on. They, uh, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness or Zadakah. Let them that dwell about Zion come and remember the captivity of your sons and daughters, which the everlasting has brought upon them. For he brought a nation upon them from afar, a shameless nation, a nation that has no shame. And of a strange language, which neither reverence old man nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. But what can I help you? For he had brought these plagues upon you, will deliver you from the hand of your enemies. Enemies, Go your way, O oh my children, go your way. This is Shamuth or Exodus 32, 1 through 9. And we're once again, we're talking about Yahuwah's uh, kasa with Yashara, anger. And when the people saw that Masha delayed to come down out of the mount, now you guys might be familiar with this story. Masha went up to the mountain to go deal with Yahuwah and speak with him. He was gone for quite some time. And so 
some of the Yasser Alim are all like, well, we don't think he's coming back. So let's make an idol. Now, the Most High told them specifically not to do this, and they did it. Let's see what happens. When the people saw that Mashad delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aharon or Aaron and said unto him, make us aluahim or an aluah, which shall go before us. For as for this, Masha, the man that brought us out of the land of Masraim or Egypt, we know not what has become of him. And Aharon said unto them, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your women and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them unto Aharon or Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he made it a molten calf. And they said, these be this be our Alua, O Yasharal, which brought you out of the land of Masraim. And when Aharon saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aharon made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to Yahua. So even Aaron was encouraging this. He was encouraging Yasharal to build this golden calf. Even when Yahuwah said not to do this, he specifically said this a few chapters prior, not to make molded images. Let's keep going. As they rose up early on the morrow and offered to send smoke offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose up to play, Yahuwah said unto Masha, go get down. For your people, which you brought out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. See, the Most High gave the commandments not to do this, and they did it anyway. They have made unto them a, a molten calf and have worshipped it. That actually should say golden, but a lot of translations say molten now. They've worshipped it and sacrificed thereunto and said, These be your, uh, This be your Alua, O Yasharal, which you brought out of the land of Egypt. And Yahuwah said unto Masha, I have seen this people. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people, hard-headed, stiff-necked, stubborn, don't want to listen. And you still see that to this very day with our people. They like to cherry-pick scripture. They like to say, no, nah, we ain't got to do that. No, nah, I want to do that. They still want to hold on to the ways of Babylon. They don't want to come out of her like he told us to. And I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying, attack our people, but we, we as his people have to hold one another accountable. If I'm doing something that's against the most high, you need to be telling me that I'm wrong in what I'm doing, that I'm doing something the most high doesn't want. We have to hold each other accountable because iron sharpens iron, period, point blank. I'm only telling this to my people out of love because I want my people to come out of campianity. I want my people to come out of these heathen religions such as Islam and Christianity I want my people to serve Yahuwah in spirit and in truth. That they inherit what was promised to us. I want that for our people. But we are a stiff-necked, stubborn people because it's in our blood. Those of you guys, those of you Abari people in this chat that have children, you know how hard-headed Hebrew children are. They don't listen, which is why I believe strongly and whooping they behind if they don't listen. But we are stiff-necked people, and it's in our blood. But that's not an excuse to continue to be stiff-necked. All right? Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath or my kasaf may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. So the Most High says, my anger, my kasaf has waxed hot against them. And I will consume them and I will still make of them a great nation, even though I'm going to chastise them. This is Bamadabar or Numbers 11, 1 through 15. And when the people complained, it displeased Yahuwah. So the Most High done brought us out from under our oppressors. He had allowed us to be able to escape two centuries of slavery. Now, one of the great deceptions you're going to see in Christianity is they're saying that the Egyptian captivity was 400 years. That is not the truth, bro. That 400 years we see in the scriptures that's told to Abram in uh, Genesis or Barashith 15, 13, that is talking about our current captivity. 
The captivity in Egypt was not 400 years because you fail to understand that a good chunk of that time, they were not in captivity. Because remember, Jacob came with his sons when Joseph was ruler over Egypt. It wasn't until after Yusuf or Joseph passed that this other Pharaoh put them into captivity, but they were in that land long before they were enslaved under Joseph. It was not 400 years. It was 200 something years. According, I believe in the book of you believe it, it specifies it as 215 years. That 400 years is talking about right now. All right. Which is why this eclipse is coming up and we're seeing signs from the most high. All right. But I just want to make that clear. So the most high delivered us out of bondage. After that 200 something years, we were there. By his mighty hand, he showed signs, plagues, split the sea through Masha, showed miracles, showed his power, protected his people, and they're constantly complaining. Now, you got to also understand the mixed multitude that was amongst them was putting this stuff in their mind as well. So we can't just blame our ancestors 100% because there was a mixed multitude amongst them that was trying to get them to go before the most high and sin. Okay, so we got to understand that there's two, there's levels to this, right? Let's keep reading. And when the people complained to displease Yahuwah and Yahuwah heard it and his kasa or his anger was kindled and the fire of Yahuwah burnt amongst them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. So the Most High was so angry because they just kept complaining and it was so much he was doing for us, for our ancestors. He you know, gave them mana. He gave them angels bread from heaven. He gave them water when they were thirsty, but they, everything he did was not good enough for him or good enough for them. You know, they always wanted this. They wanted that even so much so that they were talking about, let's just go back to Egypt. Once again, the mixed multitude has something to do with that. And if you have not watched my video on the mixed multitude, uh, I suggest you check it out because I tie it, it. It does tie to what I'm talking about right now. So the Most High burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Masha, and Masha prayed unto Yahuwah, the fire was quenched. So the Most High came with fire and destruction upon some of our ancestors who were just constantly complaining. And it wasn't until Masha prayed, the Most High said, okay, I'm pulling it back. He was angry. Let's keep going. And the mixed multitude that was amongst them fell a lusting. So once again, the mixed multitude had a, had, had a hand in this, this uh, rebellion and this constant complaining. And the children of Yasharal also wept again. So the Most High just brought fire down and destroyed some of his own people because they're constantly complaining. But then the mixed multitude enticed them to complain some more. Oh, boy. Mm. And the children of Yasharal also wept again and said, who shall give us meat to eat or flesh to eat? Bashar, we remember the fish, which we did eat in Matsurim freely. So now they're saying, we don't want angels bread. We want meat. We want fish. When we were in captivity, at least we got to eat fish. Oh, I ain't going to lie, y'all. When I read these books, I get irritated with my people. I get irritated with my ancestors because I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? But this is what we see today, as I've said. Sometimes what Yahuwah do, does is just not good enough for us. Let's keep reading. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic, but now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So the Most High gave them angel's bread. That's what manna is. It, it's essentially like um, uh, bread with honey in it. OK, it's called angel's bread in certain translations. They didn't want that. They wanted fish, cucumbers, onions, garlic, melons. Even, the, even though they were in captivity, they were eating these things. But they wanted to go back to captivity because the angel's bread Yahuwah gave them wasn't good enough. Oh, boy. Mm, 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 mm. 
But now our souls dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof is the color of bedellium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it into a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when, oh, I think I just stopped it right there. Okay, my bad. And the taste of it was as fresh oil. Like I said, depending on the translation, it's described in the book of Ezra as, as having honey in it. So it would have been essentially like um, when you think of like the wafer that people did in communion, it would look like that. But then it would also have honey in it. So it was it had a sweet you know, taste to it. And the Most High gave them enough mana that they could gather and gather and gather and have unlimited food if they needed it. Even when it came to Shabbat and then feasting, they would have mana to gather. Uh, let me read these comments before I continue on to the next section here. Let me go here. Give me one second. All right. Reading some of these comments. F.O. Judah's in the building. Shabbat Shalom. Aki, good to see you. Uh, yes. 215 years is how long Yashara was in captivity during Egypt. It was not 400 years. They were in the land of Canaan 215 years. Then in Egypt, 215 years. Uh, 430, not 400. Right. So Canaan wouldn't be Egypt. Therefore, that 215 years would be half of that 430. Therefore, they were in captivity in Egypt about 215 years. Correct. Marquia says the large set of you was not to be taken lightly, especially not done away with. Exactly. But this is what these heathens have taught. And so a lot of our people are deceived into thinking that we don't need to keep them. And some of the nations are even telling people that, uh, you know, we can't, we were supposed to keep the feast days, but we're not supposed to keep them until we're in the new Yerushalayim, which is also false. I need to listen to the mixed multitude. I mean, if you want to listen to the mixed multitude and go in the ways, uh, uh, of the, the ways that the most high didn't like the, that's a bad idea, but if that's what you want to do, let it be. So that's on you. I would not listen to the mixed multitude because the mixed multitude were very wicked. They were very evil. I would have no interest in listening to these nations that were trying to get us to go against the most high. I'm just saying. I don't know if you're trolling or if that was a joke or what, but I definitely wouldn't be listening to the mixed multitude. Honey bread sounds pretty delicious when you'll have nothing else to eat. Exactly. Exactly, Ak. I mean, it may not have been what you want. It's just like, okay, I'll give you an example, right? Sometimes we want something from the most high, right? Like, let's say I'm just going to give an example. Let's say you want a husband or you want a wife, right? A husband or a wife. And you pray and you say to the most high, I want this person. I want that person. Let's say he sends you that person. But because that person is not applicable to your standard of what you want in that person, as far not so much in righteousness and Yahua and knowing the word and all that, but more so in looks. More so that they might have some flaws that Yahuwah is going to use you to help them work on. Because they don't look the way you want them to look, or because they don't have certain qualities you might want in, in a person based on your own personal uh, desire, you might reject them. And then you might be all like, oh, Abba, oh, Ab, you, oh, why, why, why am I not married? Why is this, why am I, why can I not find someone? It's because he did answer your prayers. He did send you that person. But because they didn't fit your expectations, you rejected them. So you have to be careful about that. You know, it's never, it's, it's, it's never, um, it, it's never about, okay, hold on. Let me uh, respond to this person. I'm talking about your teaching on the mixed multitude teaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely check it out. Okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were saying. So that's my bad. But sometimes we don't, we don't acknowledge what Yahuwah has done because we feel like it's not the way he wants it to be or the way we want it to be according to what he wants. It's always about his will and not ours as our ox says. It's not our will, but his will. All esteem to Yahuwah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We have we cannot be choosy when it comes to what he wants for us. Now, um, and you have we, we also have to understand that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So how we feel, how we think, how we interpret things may not necessarily be how he does. 
So we can't throw something out because we it doesn't fit our understanding of what we want from the most high. We should be seeking him and asking him directly, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what I'm supposed to be following? Is this a person I'm supposed to be marrying? A lot of times, especially when it comes to relationships and marriage and women and men, we operate in lust, which can blind us. Being attracted to someone can blind us. Someone saying pleasing words and making it sound convincing can blind us. But we always have to take it up to the most high first to fully understand. Nimrod says, I'm an Israelite from Africa. I can relate to the majority of the ancient Hebrew words. For instance, uh, Ham, Kam, Yafath, uh, Feast of Sukkoth, Yahuwah's word is forever true. Hallelujah, Hua. Yada, Yahua, all praises to the most high. Shout out to all of our Bantu Israelite brethren in the continent. Those of the Northern Kingdom and those of the remnant of Yahuda that are still there. We will connect in the future to talk more about this and many more. Salama. All right, shalom to you. So we, we have to make sure we're not. And, and here's another thing. Sometimes Yahuwah has a blessing that's coming to you. Yahuwah has something for you. And trust me, this is not pro prosperity gospel I'm preaching right now. But sometimes Yahuwah has a blessing coming from a source you don't expect it to come from. Maybe you don't like this person. Maybe you don't like how they act. Maybe you think something's off about them. But turning away a blessing can be because you're operating in your own, your own personal bias about something. Some of us may say, I don't like white people. I don't like Edomites. Sometimes Yahuwah may use Edomites to bless you. So you have to be careful about turning people away, turning this person away, turning that away because of how you personally feel about something. I have my issue with Esau. I have my issue with Edomites, but I realize that there are people, there are Edomites that I've come across in this walk who do have a love for the Most High, that the Most High has used me or used them to bless me. And I don't turn that away. I don't reject that. I try to just be accepting of people because there may be a word from the Most High a Edomite might have for me, a Moabite might have for me, a, a, a Hamite might have for me. So we have to be careful about how we, we approach people. Now, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears, right? So if someone's coming at you in a disrespectful, hateful way, clearly they're not sent by the most high. But a lot of times we judge someone because of how they look and refusing to receive the message or whatever words might come out of their mouth just because of that. So we have to be careful not to be too biased where we could reject someone that might be sent by the most high. Because the Bible says we have entertained angels unawares. So be careful about that, Yasharal, okay? Melanated by Yah, Shabbat Shalom says, just like he blessed Yusuf while in prison and in Matzraim. Yes, Yahuwah can turn a bad situation into a good one. Imagine if Yusuf would have laid with Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's wife. Would he still have went to jail? Would this still have transpired into him becoming a king and ruling over uh, Egypt? Imagine if he would have fought against his brothers and not got sold to the Ishmaelites. And then when they did what they did to him, to the Ishmaelites, then to the Egyptians, they would not have did what they did to him would he have been in a position where they would have come to him for help? Mm. You see how the most I can turn situations around? People might work against you. People might be plotting against you. Your own family may reject you. However, though his brothers rejected him and basically gave him up and sold him off, they ended up needing him for something. And he had the power to deny them that thing. Not saying that we should be vengeful, right? We shouldn't be vengeful. Yahuwah said, vengeance is mine. But Yahuwah humbled them by putting them in a position where you're going to need to go to him because there's a famine going on right now. And he had a dream it was going to happen. And you had a problem with him because he was from another woman. And he was not one of the 12 tribes from the children of promise at the time. So he was looked at as the outcast. But long story short, 
Yahoo used him in a magnificent way. When even when he was sitting in jail, sitting in prison, he probably didn't know what was going to happen to him. He probably didn't foresee all these things. And I was, I was, uh, you know, telling a sister yesterday that I've been through a lot of my personal life that I never understood. Why is it always me? But now I understand the position I'm in right now. I understand why. When you're chosen, you are going to get it worse than everybody else. Give me a one in the chat if you've always felt like the black sheep in the family. I'm going to start with that. I've always been the black sheep in my family. I have a big old Yaudi family. We're all Yaudin. And I've always been the outcast, even to the other nations that are grafted into the covenant. Give me a one in the chat if you've always felt like an outcast. You didn't fit in with people. You didn't fit in with your family. You didn't fit in with your colleagues, your social circle. Danielle says she's been the black sheep. High speed's been the black sheep. I'm seeing a lot of ones in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will always be the outcast amongst everybody else, whether you're Yasharal or whether you're from another nation. Who he chooses for himself, who he chooses to reveal the truth to, will always be the black sheep. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of ones in here. And now that I'm in the truth, it all makes sense. It all makes sense now why I've been the black sheep. I felt uh, Omiya Yaki Yada says, I felt different and I didn't fit into anything. Absolutely, 100%. People used to be like, Yaxer, bro, you kind of strange. Yaxer, you, the, even in church, even in the Christian church, I did not fit in at all. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? The kids used to, you know, uh, 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 say things about me. And, you know, I used to question a lot of things about, you know, what they were teaching in Christianity because I used, I used to talk to a lot of older people. You know what I'm saying? And I found out even as a young child that there was no letter J. You know what I'm saying? Way back then. I went into Sunday school one day and I said, how could his name be Jesus? There was no letter J back then. And the Sunday school teacher was like, oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 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 and, then, and then the other guy stepped in. He's like, well, actually, his name is Yeshua. I'm like, so why are we calling him Jesus then? That's false. So why are we calling him Jesus? So I've always been that child that always questioned things, asked questions. And as a result of that, I've always been the outcast, but I've always been very unique from everybody else. I have four other brothers. I'm the second oldest. Amongst all my other brothers, everybody in the family knew there's something different about this kid. But then out of all my brothers, I've gotten it worse than every one of them. But like I said, it all makes sense, which is why I always related to the story of Joseph. Uh, Kyle Gabriel says, I'm adopted and labeled with ADHD, bipolar disorder. I'm falsely accused of abuse. And I've been D-R-U-G-G-E-D and M'd as an adopted kid, praying y'all gives me strength to keep going. Aki, I understand that because I have been molested by my own mother. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand how hard that can be. Um, another reason why I knew that I had to go through some harsh things because my brothers never experienced that from my mother. I did. Um, the abuse from my dad, I never, uh, they never experienced that, but I did. So, you know, I'm praying that you find healing in this and that the most high will strengthen you. But he definitely will. I found healing in this truth. And I always tell people that family, I have found healing in this truth, a strength in this truth, because it all makes sense about the curses. I realized that my father's trauma came from his father's trauma. It's just been passed down, passed down from generation to generation. When I was being abused by my dad, a lot of the things he did were done to our people in slavery. My family all come from the South. They all, a lot of them have Southern accents, cook. They, they're, they're big on Southern cooking. Clearly, I'm a descendant of a slave. The same tactics that the slave masters used against the, the slaves, such as sicking the dog on them, my dad did to me. Uh, saying, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the R-ing that the women did to the black men even. My mom did to me. The, the beating until you have slits in your back. My dad did to me. 
these this is all an example of the curses and i'm not saying this to you know dumb you got uh make you guys feel bad or nothing i'm just trying to get you guys to understand that the healing the aruka came from the truth because i was able to make sense of this i never understood why i'm like why would they do these kind of things but i realized that this slavery thing it, it, it goes it goes so far back but a lot of the trauma that we've carried from back in that time and even back in biblical days has also been passed down to us. It's really, really deep when you understand a lot of this stuff, but I think the most high that I found the strength and healing from the word of the most high, and I'm able to move forward. I'm able to forgive what my dad has done, what my mom has done, what my adopted mom has done. I'm able to forgive and move on. I was not able to really do that when I was a Christian. I was not able to really do that when I was following what the pastor said. I had to I had to be able to make sense of the root of these things in order to truly, truly be able to find healing and to forgive. Uh, Annie K is in the building. Shabbat Shalom, sis. We're glad you're here with us, sis. We're glad you're here. Um, Shaul Abadya says, Christianity has destroyed the Hebrew families. Absolutely. Uh, Christianity is and always will be the greatest terror organization against our people, period. Christianity was literally created to keep us from our father. And like I said, it, it, it is mentioned in the scriptures, you will serve other idols of wood and stone, right? So it's been written, but it, it, it's it's been the greatest deception on our minds for so long. And now that we've left the Christian plantation, people just don't, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they say we're in a cult, when literally, they're in a cult because uh, the central figure of Christianity is essentially Rome. The same people that worked wickedness against Yahshua. Ryland says, much prayer to you and strength and grow and stand tall, walk strong. Yes, Aki, Kyle, stand strong. As a matter of fact, family, this reminds me, I wanted to lift up someone's name in prayer. Um, we had a sister in our discord that... Um, told us that she wanted us to keep her brother in prayer because today um, she had to drop him off at the emergency room. And so I wanted to lift them up in prayer. Uh, our, our beloved sister, Stephanie, okay, her brother, I'm going to put his name in the chat. And uh, if you guys can please keep her brother in prayer, okay? His name is Dwayne, okay? Please keep him in prayer. I'm typing his name in the chat. She didn't really give too much details, but I just wanted to uh, remind you guys to please keep Dwayne in law or prayer, okay? Because she had to take him to the emergency room. She didn't give me too much details, but I just want you guys to understand that. Uh, Melanated by Yas says, you're speaking straight facts. I'm the third of six, and I was, I was always the one everyone leaned on and treated as nothing until they needed something. Exactly. I feel that way all the time. This truth helped me forgive my mom and show empathy. All esteem to the most high, Yahuwah. I posted about this, sis. I posted about this on Facebook not too long ago. And people were saying, oh, you know, you need to you need to um, forgive your mom. And maybe it's your attitude towards her. And I said, it's not that at all. It's not that at all. I've literally tried to forgive or not not so much forgive, but open up that 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 route of communication towards her. But I just realized that some people until she deals with what she's done. And until she acknowledges what she's done, there's never really going to be accountability on her end. And I pray that she'll get it right before, you know, the day of the most high comes. Because if you feel like you didn't do anything wrong, we have a problem. My adopted mom has done harm to me as well as my biological mom. And both of them don't like to address what they've done, which is the problem. But this family is cursed. My whole family is cursed. I'm the only one. The only Yaudi in a family of Yaudim that knows the truth. That is not a coincidence. If your family, you're the only one in your family that knows the truth, that is not a coincidence. He chose you to know the truth. Even to the nations grafted in, he chose you to know the truth. Yada Yahua, all esteemed to the Most High. Maurice Moshe says, at first, being smart and intelligent was solving all kinds of problems at a young age. But when discussing the word, I'm told I think I know it all. Yeah, they tell me that all the time. 
They say, Yexer, you're establishing your own uh, self-righteousness. Yexer, you have a lot of pride. It's not pride. I mean, I boast in your I boast in your Usha. Brew alcoholic, raise a glass, hallelujah. No, I'm just playing. Um, I mean, if you have knowledge, if you have wisdom that comes from the most high, you're supposed to share it. And because I know the scriptures and because I'm able to address things that people may not have the answer for because they don't read the Bible, because they don't show themselves, say to show themselves approved, they want to turn around and say I'm prideful. It's not prideful. That's me seeking the most high, serving him in Ruach and truth, a moth, studying to show myself approved, approaching his world with fear and trembling, testing the Ruach, testing the spirits. That's all that is, but they want to turn around and call it pride. The fact that we've been under a lie so long, we've been deceived for so long, should be enough of a reason to be wanting to read the Bible for yourself and, 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 and just eat up this knowledge. Just eat up that knowledge. Uh, I see many people misunderstand the concept of forgiveness because they are based on a religious meaning or a human understanding. Need to discuss the Abari meaning so all can know the truth. Yeah, so... I will definitely probably have to do a teaching on that because saying I forgive you is not necessarily forgiving someone. Forgiving is essentially like Yahuwah, right? If we do something wrong, right? And we commit a transgression against him and then we ask for forgiveness, we repent to the most high. The moment that we do, he forgets it, disregards it. And doesn't hold it against you anymore. That's what true forgiveness is. So when you truly forgive someone, you are not going to bring up what they did over and over again to spite them. That is true forgiveness. And I know that can be hard because sometimes we want to have that gotcha moment, that aha, I gotcha. But true forgiveness is really, really moving past it and letting it go. Not bringing it up anymore. A, a clean slate. That's what true forgiveness is. And I understand depending on how bad the situation is, that can be really, really hard to do. But that's what true forgiveness is. And that's why I said with my mom, I try to just move past it, not talk about it, not discuss it. But she likes to go back to it, but put the blame on me. And so I just realized no matter what I do to try to make reparation for my mistakes, she doesn't feel she needs to make reparation for her mistakes. It's very one-sided. And that's part of the problem. Both parties have to come into a sense of forgiveness to put it away and smash it, kill the beef. But some people don't want to do that because they want to be able to throw it right back in your face. And that's the problem. <laughs> Marquia says the culture in the land is part of the perpetual abusers, reprobates, and penalize the afflicted. Absolutely. It happens all the time out here. You know, if you think about um, what happens when it comes to our people, let's just say there's, you know, a, a story that comes out of police brutality or something like that. People can go on Twitter and literally post a video of a black dude beating up a white guy. With no context, they can slice and dice the clips and say, look at this anti-whiteism, right? But when it comes to a police officer unaliving a black man on camera and it shows the whole video, they can sit there and say, okay, wait a minute. You know what? There's probably more to this. I need more context. There's a double standard. The fact that they're like, you know, we, I keep talking about Candace Owens, but the fact that every time it came to one of her own being deleted or some sort of injustice, she never, ever, she always blames the victim, which was that said black man, black woman, but never says anything about the oppressor, never says anything about what they did to that person. That is the culture of America. That is the culture of this nation. Blame the black man, blame the black woman, Blame the black child, but don't blame the person who did the act to them. That is how toxic America is, where there's just no accountability, where they hold themselves not guilty.
because America has taught that culture of holding yourself not guilty, even when you do wrong to the chosen. So there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, Nisi Abya says, adopting the oldest when younger siblings came was always wrong, never right, then abuse, neglect, SA happened, then always on the outside and not allowed to ask questions. Whoo. Sis, I'm going to tell you this right now. I was telling my oct this the other day. Um, I think that there's a lot in this family that is being hid from me specifically. Because I remember asking my dad's sister, who's my auntie, who adopted me. She's like my second mom, other than my biological. I asked her, why did my dad do what he did? There had to be reason. Because my dad was heavy into drugs. I was obviously born in 89 during the crack epidemic and all that. I asked her, I said, why did he do these things? There has to be a source for it, right? Usually the abused become the abuser. And she said, yeah, sir, it's not because he was abused. I'm like, okay, so what happened to him when he was young? And she literally came up with this cock and bull story about him having uh, uh, an extra kidney that he shouldn't have had when he was young. He was like four and he had to get the kidney removed and it was very traumatizing. I believe there's a lot of covering up of stuff in this family. And I do believe it involves S.A. amongst this family in this family. I do believe it involves I-N-C-E-S-T. 100% I believe that. And then, on my, and then on my mom's side, my biological mom's side, I believe that that's possible too. These curses are deep, 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 deep. And I may never know the answer. And so I just, you know, I kind of don't dwell on it anymore. But there's a lot of cover-ups going on in this family. There really is. And, and I, I'm not obsessing over it no more. If the most I don't want me to know. You want me to just move forward? I'll leave it to y'all. But I'm just glad that I at least know the truth and I'm able to walk in truth and make sense of what I do know. Camosphere says, so much hidden guilt and shame in our families keep the trauma cycle going. Exactly. And one thing that is not talked about in Black communities specifically is that these creepos, the uncle, the auntie, the ones that you know are, are something ain't right with them and they, you know, always want to be around young children. And a lot of times people in the family know this is going on and they say nothing. That's the problem. That's the issue. It never gets dealt with. Therefore, it never gets fixed. And the trauma continues and continues and continues and continues, especially when it comes to uh, women on boys. You know, a lot sometimes we call out the uncle that touched you know, the little girl in the family and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's the other way around. A lot of times it's the auntie, the creepy auntie that was around the nephew or around, you know, the, the uncle's son or something like that. That's not talked about. Because emotional SA is very traumatic because it happened to me. It happened to me by my own mother. And that's exactly why she don't, you know what I'm saying, uh, want to talk to me. This is why she avoids me because of that guilt. She knows what she did. And it was so traumatic for me. I had pushed it all the way to the back of my mind. I pushed it all the way to the back of my mind. And then as I was writing a song about her, it all came out. And I remembered what those moments you know, in the bathroom and what was going on and what she was doing. I remember all of it. You know what I'm saying? And I understand why she just don't want to deal with me because that thought comes back in her mind. Maybe it has something to do with my dad. I don't know. I mean, I look like him. I'm just saying. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to leave this alone. This, 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 this might get a little bit too deep for this lesson. Maybe we could have a, you know, a, a show where we call in and we just talk about trauma and stuff like that at some other time. I don't want to, I don't want to get too deep into this because it'll, it'll take me away from what we're talking about. Uh, FO Judah says, I salute you, Your willingness to be vulnerable and transparent could very well help someone and uh, help someone else achieve healing and restoration. Much love and respect. Uh, thank you so much, Aki. Sometimes these shows go in a different direction than I expect them to, but I'm happy to be vulnerable with you guys and tell you the truth because I have no shame and what the most high has helped me heal from. 
And if I'm going to speak of the most highest healing power, I might as well tell you what he healed me from. Yada, yada. Uh, Bino says, I'm late if possible. Can you sum up what you said so far real quick? Yeah, we're just talking about um, the most highest wrath against his people because of their disobedience. So we're right now, we're just having an open conversation, but I'm going to get back to the lesson now. Uh, be sure to catch the replay, okay? But uh, salute, uh, salute to you, Aki. Thank you for joining us. Shabbat shalom. Uh, Bino says, my mom blames black people always. I told my mom about the military and what they did to my dad, but dismissed it. Yeah, and that's the problem. We become the ultimate scapegoat, even when it comes to what's going on in the so-called Middle East right now, because we don't want to take a side to these folks, because we don't want to affiliate ourselves with either of these sides, because both of them have had a hand in our oppression. They're blaming us for this. We are the perfect scapegoat. I'm just telling you right now, a lot of what's coming up on this earth will continue to be blamed on the Negroes, which is why we got to stick together. But y'all, I'm going to get back to the lesson. We'll talk a little bit more uh, as we continue, okay? All right. So continuing on, this is Thachalim or Psalm 78, 12 to 32. He did wonders in the sight of their fathers, Yasharal. In the land of Masraim, in the field of Zaun, he split the sea and caused them to pass through, and he made the water stand up like a heap, and led them with the cloud by day, and by the night with the light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and made them drink, as from the great depths, and brought forth streams from the rock, and caused waters to come down his rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him to rebel against the Most High in the desert, and they tried a lua in their heart. And that's why I always tell people, do not try the most high. When I'm saying do not try him, I'm not saying like don't, don't pursue him, don't seek him. I'm saying don't test him. Don't tempt him. That's one thing he hates. And it is a form of impiety, lack of reverence, lack of respect, lack of honor to Yahuwah, lack of esteem when you try him. Don't play around with him. He's not to be played with. As our beloved sister Markia said earlier in the uh, chat, when she was, uh, she mentioned that comment earlier, do not try the most high. If there's anything you need to know, do not try him. Because this lesson is going to prove why you should. Let's keep going. Uh, whoops. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and they spoke against Alua and they said, is Alua able to set a table in the wilderness? Look, he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Is he able to give bread also? Would he provide meat for his people? Therefore, Yahuwah heard and he was wroth. He was angry. They just, it's like nothing he does was good enough for them. They're just constantly complaining. Be thankful for what Yahuwah has given you, Yahshua. I know we're struggling out here. I know we're a lot of us, the majority of us are in poverty. The majority of us do not have what the other nations have. But be thankful that you're here. Be thankful you know the truth. Be thankful you know his true son and not the heathen Edomite Messiah that's not going to save you. That's not real. Whatever little you have, if you have your health, if you have your children, your children are okay. Be thankful, Yahshua. Be thankful for what little he's done. The fact that you woke up this morning. The fact that you're alive and you're here in this Shabbat, there's a lot of other things you could be doing is a reason to esteem our father. So a fire was kindled against Yaqub and displeasure also came up against Yasharal. Just the constant complaining. Because they did not believe in Alua, neither did they trust in his deliverance. Yet, he had commanded the clouds above and opened the door of the Shamayim, and he rained down man, manna on them to eat, and he gave them the grain of the Shamayim. Men ate bread of the mighty ones, or the angels, I guess that would be. He sent them provisions to satisfaction. He made an east wind blow in the Shamayim, and by his power, he brought in the south wind, and he rained meat on them like the dust and winged birds like the sand of the seas, and let them fall in the midst of his camp all around his dwelling place. So they ate and were completely satisfied for he brought them what they desired. They had not turned away from their desire. Their food was still in their mouths. So while they were hungry, while they were asking for food, 
They were still complaining while they were still chewing their food. Yasharal, don't you be like our ancestors. Don't you be like them. Be better than them. Be more Kadash than them. Be more grateful, more righteous than them. If there's anything we can understand from the book, from the word of the Most High, it's all the things to not to do when it comes to the Father. Now, were there some righteous Yasharalim, righteous Israelites? Yes, there was. But many of them were not. Do not follow in their footsteps, okay? That's ultimately what I'm saying. When the wrath of Elua came against them and he slew the abundance of them, the abundance of Yasharal was slew, killed, unalive, deleted. And he struck down the choice ones of Yasharal. In spite of all this, they still sinned. Oh my gosh, dude. I'm getting irritated just reading this. I'm not kidding y'all. Like, man, after the most high had done literally struck them down after they were complaining, <laughs> slew the abundance of them, they still sinned. Like, oh, Father in heaven. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mm, 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 mm. In spite of all this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wonders. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Fahalim Psalms 95, 8 through 11. <laughs> Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Remember, thou shalt not try Yahuwah. Do not try the Most High. Yeah, they did that. This is what this temptation is talking about. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long, I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swore seven oaths in my wrath or kasaf that they should not enter into my rest. This is Bamadabar, Numbers 25, 1 through 11. And of course, Yasharal and everybody watching, all of these scriptures can be found on my blog. The link is in the description. If you're watching the replay, they will be in the pinned comment below. But Matabar, Numbers 25, 1 through 11, and Yasharal dwelt in Shatim, and the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab, or Moab, and they invited the people to the slaughterings of their Eluahim, and the people ate and bowed down to their Eluahim. Thus Yasharal was joined to Baal Fa'ar, and the displeasure of Yahuwah burned against Yasharal. And Yahuwah said to Masha, take all the leaders of the people and hang them up before Yahuwah, before the sun, so that the burning displeasure of Yahuwah turns away from Yashara, mixing with those strange women. And Masha said to the Shafatim, this is that word Shafat, Shafatim would be judges, okay? And Masha said to Shaphatim of Yashral, each one of you slay his men who were joined to Baal Fa'ar and see one of the children of Yashral came and brought to his brothers a Midianite woman, another nation, before the eyes of Masha and before the eyes of all the congregation of the children of Yashral who were weeping at the door of the tent of meeting. And when Phineas, son of Alazar, son of Aharon, the priest saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a spear in his hand, and he went after the man of Yashral into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Yashral and the woman threw her belly. Thus the plague among the children of Yashral came to a stop. So if you brought a strange woman, you mixed with a strange woman, there was a plague that was going to come up on you. So a lot of times you would be deleted along with her so the plague would not continue to fall upon the children of Yashral. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. 24,000 Yasharalim chased after these strange women, worshiped their deities. 24,000 of them got this plague. This was a serious problem amongst our people, and even today it still is. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha, saying, Phineas, son of Alazar, son of Aharon, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Yasharal because he was ardent with my ardor in their midst, so that I did not consume the children of Yasharal in my ardor. So if 
if Alazar had not unalived those Yasharalim that did this, Yasharal would have been destroyed altogether at that point because of the mixing with the women, chasing after the women, and worshiping their other deities. This is Yahusha, or Joshua 6, 16 to 18. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the shofars, Yahusha said unto the people, Joshua, shout for Yahuwah has given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even in it and all that are in, to Yahuwah only. Rakab or Rahab, the harlot, shall live, she and all that are with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. So the spies were sent to Yarukul, okay? And she knew they were sent by Yahuwah because she had heard about everything that Yahuwah had did with his people, fighting against the Ammonites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, so on and so forth. And so she did not tell her people that these people were spies, and she hid them so they wouldn't be hunted. So that was an honorable thing that this, this heathen woman did on behalf of Yahuwah and his people. Therefore, Yahuwah spared her. Now, in ye wise, in ye and any wise, guard yourself from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make camp of Yashra a curse and trouble it. So Yahuwah said, when I take you to this land and you destroy it, you don't take anything from these heathens. Don't take nothing that's theirs because it's cursed. The whole city is cursed. And if you take it, you become cursed and you will curse the whole camp. Now, did they listen? Let's take a look. This is Yahusha, Joshua 7, 1. But the children of Yahshua committed a transgression in the accursed thing. For a con from the tribe of Yahuda. The son of Carmi, the son of Zabadi, the son of Zarak of the tribe of Yahuda, took of the accursed thing, and the kasa, the anger of Yahuwah, was kindled against the children of Yasharal. So for what one person did, he was mad at all of us. This is why we have to, out of love and respect for our people, when we're making a mistake, we have to hold each other accountable and come at each other in love and correction. That's what he expects of us. Otherwise, we all got to, you know, reap the, you know, the, 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 the benefits of someone's mistake. OK, especially when we know something's wrong and we're not saying anything about it. We're supposed to. Yahushua or Joshua sent men from Yariku or Jericho to Ai or I, which is beside Bayath Aban on the east side of Bayath all and spoken unto them, saying, go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed A. And they returned to Yahushua, Joshua, and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite eye. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are there but few. So there went up of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thir uh, thirty and six men, so thirty-six men. For they chased him from before the gate, even unto Shabarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before uh, 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 before the ark of Yahuwah until the evening. He and the elders of Yashara and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Yahuwah, wherefore have you brought this people over the Yardan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would Yahuwah, we have been content and dwelt on the other side of the Yardan? O Alua. What shall I say when Yashra turns their back before their enemies? For the Canaanites or the Kananim and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall envire us around and cut us our name from the earth. And what will you do unto your great name? The sin of Akan. And Yahuwah said unto Yahushua, Joshua, get you up. Wherefore, lie you thus upon your face. Yashra was sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even amongst their own stuff. So Akan had taken this accursed object and literally hid it in his tent as if it was his. When Yahuwah specifically said not to do it. Mm. Therefore, the children of Yashara could not stand before their enemies 
but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the cursed thing from among you. So when they attempted to overcome their enemies, they lost the battle. Okay. To the Amorites, because they had that one person, a con had stole that accursed thing. They were cursed. Therefore their enemies overtook them. They had noticed all the times the Most High was with them to help them overcome their enemies. Because remember, it wasn't their power alone that helped them overcome these nations. It was Yahuwah that was fighting with them. The moment Akan decided to do what Yahuwah said he's not, he told him not to do, then at that moment, they lost the battle. And there were casualties because of that one Israelite that did something he wasn't supposed to do. So Yahuwah says, you're going to be cursed until you destroy that thing that you stole. To make atonement for what you did or what he did. But all Yashar all suffered off of this one Israelite. This is Dabarim or Deuteronomy 29, 24. Even all nations shall say, wherefore is Yahuwah done unto this land? What means the heat of this great Kasaf? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the Barith or Habarith, the covenant of Yahuwah Alua of their fathers, which he cut with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Matsrayim or Egypt. For they went and served other Aluahim and worshipped them. Aluahim whom they knew not and whom he had not given them. And the kasa or the kaas of, of Yahuwah was kindled against this land to bring upon it the curses that are written in the Sephar of the book. Curses of Deuteronomy 28, obviously. And Yahuwah rooted them out of their land in kaas or anger and in kasaf, anger and wrath, and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secrets of Yahuwah, Alua Heinu, are given to his children and their sons forever and ever that they may observe every word of the Torah. All right, we've got a few more verses about his anger against Yahshua, and we're going to move on to when it surrounds the other nations outside of his people. Always got to start with us first, though. This is Malachim Shani, 2 Kings 22, 16 through 17. Thus says Yahuwah, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book or the Safar, which, which the king of Yahudah has read. Because they have forsaken me, have burned incense unto other Aluahim, that they might provoke me to kaas, to anger with all the works of their hand. Therefore, my wrath or my kasaf shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Dabarim or Deuteronomy 9, 6 through 8. Understand, therefore, that Yahuwah Aluah Heka gives you not this good land to possess it for your righteousness, for you are a stiff necked people. So he didn't give us the land because we're righteous. He gave it to us because our, he made a covenant with Abraham and the Most High don't lie. He gave us the land because he promised it to Abraham and the Most High does not lie. He said, I will give it to your seed. But keep in mind, he knew that Abraham's seed was going to be rebellious and stiff necked. So he's making it clear. I gave you this land not for your righteousness because you're stiff necked. You're hard headed. You don't listen. You're stubborn. Remember and forget how you provoked. Remember and forget not how you provoked Yahuwah, Aluahe, God, to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you did depart out of the land of Egypt until you came out into this place. You have been rebellious against Yahuwah. Also in Karaba Horeb, you provoked Yahuwah to Kasaf so that Yahuwah was kaas or angry with you to have to destroy you. You believe uh, Jubilees 1534, and there will be a great wrath from Yahuwah against the children of Yasharal because they've forsaken his covenant and turned aside from his debar or his word and provoked and blasphemed inasmuch as they do not observe the ordinance of the Torah as they have treated their members like the Gentiles so that they be removed and rooted out of the land, that there will be no more there'll be no more to pardon or forgiveness unto them so that there should be forgiveness and pardon for all sin of this eternal error. And then Malachim Shani, 2 Kings 23, 26 through 27. Notwithstanding, Yahuwah turned not from the fierceness of his great Kasaf or his wrath, wherefore his Kaas or anger was kindled against Yahuda because of the provocations that Manashah had provoked him withal. And Yahuwah said, I will remove Yahuda also out of my sight as I have removed Yasharal, because as we know, the northern kingdom Yasharal went into Assyrian captivity. Yahuda followed after that. 
And I will cast off this city, Yerushalayim, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. And this is exactly why the land is desolate to this day. The transgressions of our forefathers. Now, when we're restored back and brought back to the land, the land will be restored. It will be bountiful. It will be beautiful. But currently at this moment, at this time, the land is desolate as deserts. And if you're new to this channel, that land they call the Middle East is not the land. And I probably will do a teaching at some point. This is our Zara Shani, 2nd Ezra 1 7. Am I not even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? But they provoked me unto Kasaf and despised my counsels. Shamuah Rishun, 1 Samuel 28 16 through 19. Then says Shamuah, Wherefore, when do you ask of me, seeing Yahuwah has departed from you and has become your enemy? And Yahuwah has done to him as he spoke by me, for Yahuwah has rent the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, even to Daud, because you obeyed not the voice of Yahuwah, nor executed his fierce ka'as, or uh, um, that's actually kasaf, upon Amalek. Therefore, Yahuwah has done this thing unto you to this day. Moreover, Yahuwah will also deliver Yahshua with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall you and your sons be with me. Yahuwah also shall deliver the host of Yashra into the hands of the Philistines. So this is Shamuah going to Saul, who was the first king of Yashra before David. Okay. And the Most High commanded Saul to smite all the children of Amalek and to take nothing that they have. But what did Saul do? Saul said, okay, I'll smite Amalek, but. I'm going to save their king and I'm going to take his animals and I'm going to use it for a burnt sacrifice to the most high. That's not what Yahuwah said. He said, destroy everything. He said, destroy Amalek, because if you don't destroy Amalek, essentially Amalek is just going to breed and make more children. He wanted Amalek destroyed. If Saul would have listened, there would be no ish people today right now because they're descendants of Amalek. He thought he was doing a righteous thing by killing the majority of Amalek, but saving alive the king and then taking their cattle and their animals and sacrificing it to Yahuwah. But Yahuwah specifically said, destroy all of them, including their cattle. But no, he didn't want to do that. This is exactly why Yahuwah rejected him from being king. Yahuwah is very specific about how he wants stuff done. And you have to go by what he says 100%. Do not turn to the right or to the left when it comes to the Torah, when it comes to the laws, when it comes to the commandments. All right. Now that I've made my point clear <laughs> about our ancestors' disobedience, I pray that you guys will understand, those of Yashara, why it's important to uh, follow the way of the Most High. Um, Child of Yahuwah 89 is in the building. Shabbat Shalom, Aki. Good to see you, Op. Danielle says, my husband and I went over this last night. Literally everything you're saying, it's crazy. I know, right? It's like, yeah, ooh, we'll be all having us on one accord. All the steam to you yeah, You are 100% correct. I thank you for making me homeless and searching for help. I then realized what I spoke, and he set me straight. Hallelujah, Hua. Yada, ya, ooh. Uh, now, uh, Nisi Abya says, it's still happening today. People can't leave things well enough alone. Always have to dig up something and take it. Exactly. Exactly. Look at the whole situation with uh, BLM. And, you know, I'm no supporter of BLM. Well, I mean, do I believe in our people? Do I support our people independently outside of that or that said organization? Absolutely. Do our people matter? Absolutely. But during the whole BLM protest, you remember how people were just breaking into stores and just stealing stuff? Had nothing to do with the injustice of our people. Some people were just becoming opportunists. And unfortunately, there's a lot of our people that was doing that. Can't leave stuff alone. Can't stay home. Can't, you know what I'm saying? Just, it, it, I mean, I, I don't really see a point in protesting, honestly. But even if you would have did just that and not, you know, smashed down and stole some Nikes, what do Nikes have to do with your oppression? We can't leave stuff alone. Always got to take something. Yeah, so true, sis. The stiff neck people that we are, we're stubborn like an ox. Absolutely. But that's got to change, man. We want to see the ways of Yahuwah. We're going, we're going to see, we want to see the righteousness of Yahuwah and our redemption. We're going to have to break away from that. 
I get mad when I read about how rebellious our ancestors were to Yah. I pray that my heart is not stubborn to Yah. I, I get frustrated too. Y'all could see. Y'all can hear just how frustrated I'm getting just reading this. It irritates me. The Most High did so much, bro. And it's like our, our people just didn't care. It didn't mean nothing to them. Shay Glory is in the building. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you, family. All state to Yahuwah. Thank you for joining us today. Barbara Knight says, Yahuwah saved me from a heart attack and a fire. And he saved both my sons from asthma. And I said, do you think they use him to keep us in line? Y'all spanked me. I deserved it and learned. Oh, absolutely. He will definitely use our children to keep us in line. Certain situations will happen to those we love, even not even just our children, family members and all types of situations to get us back to reality. Because sometimes we'll say something, sometimes we'll, you know, we'll do something and, and, you know, he'll try to reprove us, but that's not going to get our attention. So sometimes he's going to have to hit us a little bit harder. You know, that's very true. Uh, Ryland says, remind me again, why were the Abari Yashua Leem so stiff necked? What influenced this? This is ridiculous. Even rereading. It's just in their blood. They were just stiff necked people, period. It's not because they were, it's not because they were actually, you know, there was something affecting them and being stiff necked. Now there were some influences from the mixed multitude that was amongst them telling them to do these things, but they always have been a stiff necked people. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just how we are as a people. It's just, I don't know. I can't even tell you. We're just stiff neck, period. It, it's not so much that there was a, something that influenced us to be this way outside of the mixed multitude, but even before that, we were stiff necked. You know, so, I mean, even if you think about Abraham, Abraham had a lot of Amuna in Yahuwah, and he was very obedient to Yahuwah in a lot of things. But at the same time, it wasn't fully there in certain instances. If you think about um, his wife, Sarah, Yahuwah told Abiram, you're going to have a child that's going to bring forth the promise. You know, Isaac, Jacob, Yashara, Yahushua will come from Yashara. He told that specifically to Abiram. But there was a point where Abiram started to doubt that this was going to happen because one, he was old and two, because Sarah was barren. So Sarah suggested to Abraham, take Hagar for a wife or, you know, take her to try to have a child with her, conceive with her because I'm too old. That should have been a moment where Abraham said, you know what? Yahuwah said, you're going to have a child. You're going to have a child. Do not think about you being barren. Do not think about how old and advanced you are in age. He said the child is going to come through you. Then I'm gonna, we're gonna stick by that. I'm not taking Hagar to have a child with her. But he hearkened unto her because she had doubt. It was his point, it was his job as a man of Yahuwah, as a husband to her, to help strengthen her Amunah in Yahuwah. But instead, he hearkened unto her and went and, and, and had a child with Hagar, who was Ishmael, the first son of Abraham. And now we got a whole nation of people that come from Ishmael, that were one part of the Psalms 83 conspiracy. They're the ones who sold Joseph to, uh, to the Egyptians. Some of the Ishmaelites are our enemies, period. Now we got a whole nation of people right now saying that the promise was to Ishmael and not to Isaac and to Jacob and to Yashua. Because Abraham did not reprove his wife in that moment. That's what I would have done. Like, uh, babe, you ain't got no faith. Yahuwah said the child's coming through you. He specifically said that. This is a moment where our amunah or our belief or what you call faith. I don't like that word faith, but amunah or belief has to be proven. So that was a stiff neck move on his part. It was a stiff, stiff neck move on Sarah's part. Because some, he already told her what the situation was. The Most High told him what the situation was, but yet he chose to go the other way. Stiff necked, 100%. Uh, reading some more of these comments. Marquia says, Shake my head, but we are the last of their worries to come. Foolish. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's facts. Uh, my wife's mom said, Black people are unforgivable. 
Whoa. Yikes. Uh, I'm assuming that your wife is white. She's from another nation. I'm just trying to clear that up. Let me know because the way in which she said it sounds like she's not melanated herself. Let me know. All right, reading some more of these comments. Uh, <laughs> B Note says, that's how you know we them though, <laughs> right? Facts. It's like, if you ever knew anybody that was hard headed and stiff neck, it's definitely us. It's like, and that, if that ain't, if you don't want to look at Deuteronomy 28 and you don't want to look at all the scriptures and how they, they describe us, you'll know by the fact that we stiff neck. That should be enough right there. <laughs> that was funny. Mark Eyal says, our second son's middle name is Israel, and he can be the definition of hard-headed at times. It was definitely speaking, uh, speaking to us through this experience. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Oh, boy. Man, when me and my girl get married, we have children. That's why I'm glad me and her are one accord on, on whooping they behind if they want to get stiff neck, you know, because they're going to be, our child is obviously going to be pure Abari. You know what I'm saying? Pure Israelite. So it's like, I expect a whole level of stiff neckness from, from them. Being the fact I was stiff necked even, I was one of the most hard headed kids. You know what I'm saying? Even in class, it's like, yeah, sir, you're so hard headed, you know? Um, but yeah, we are definitely a stiff neck people. Uh, let's see, reading more comments. Thank you for your awesome teaching. We need to be reminded of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Lady Yaudi says, and our people still don't get it. Such a shame. Absolutely. We got to get it together. Yashara, we got to get it together. All right, y'all. We're going to get back to the lesson. We're almost done with this. Um, and we got to talk after this lesson. So, I want to go ahead and keep on going. So let's keep moving, family. All right. Yahuwah is a relentless Alua. When I first read this, I got scared. I ain't going to lie. Because I was just thinking about the wrath of the Most High. This is Thah Halim or Psalms 18, 7 through 8. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he, Yahuwah, was Kaas. He was angry. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devoured coals were kindled by it. That is a scary sight. That is scary. And like I said, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to make you fear him. I'm trying to make you fear him. So you don't see this side of him. Because these scriptures we about to get into are scary. Uh... Boosie Chanel is in the building. Shabbat Shalom, sis. Good to see you, beloved. Uh, Kyle says, my wife's parents are Hispanic. I'm mixed. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that makes sense. That, that, that makes sense now. All right. Um, okay, this is Kanuk or Enoch 98, 11 through 15. And in the Sefer, you're going to find it in 97.22. Woe to you, obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood. Whence you uh, have good things to eat and, and to drink and to be filled. From all the good things which Yahuwah, the Most High, has placed in abundance on the earth, therefore you shall have no peace. Woe unto you who love the deeds of unrighteousness. Wherefore do you hope for good unto yourselves? Know that you shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous and they shall cut off your necks and slay you and have no kasad or mercy upon you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous for no grave shall be dug for you. Woe to you who set at the words of the righteous for you shall have no hope of life. Woe to you who write down lying words for they write down their lies that men may hear them and act unrighteously towards their neighbor. Therefore, you shall have no shalom but die a sudden death. This is Safan Yahu, Zephaniah 114. The great day of Yahuwah is near. It is near and hastens greatly. Even the, even the voice of the day of Yahuwah, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of kasaf, wrath, a day of trouble, of distress, a day of wasteness and desolation a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, 
a day of the shofar, an alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they've sinned against Shaua, and their blood shall be poured out as the dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of Yahuwah. Kasaf, or the day of Yahuwah's Kasaf. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. This is the day of Yahuwah. This is his wrath we're talking about here. Let's keep going. Therefore, as I live, says Yahuwah Sabaoth, Yahuwah of armies, the Elu of Yasharal, surely Moab shall be as Sodom. I'm sure y'all know about Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? And the children of Ammon as Amurah or Amora, even the breeding of nettles and salt pits and perpetual desolation. The remnant of my people shall spoil them and the remnant of my people shall possess them. So we are also possessed Moab. This shall be, uh, this shall they have for their pride because they've reproached and magnified themselves against the people of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Judgment upon our enemies. Yahuwah will be terrible unto them. For he will famish all the Eluahim of the earth, and men shall worship him, everyone from his place, even all the isles of the heathen, the Cushites, or the, you know, the Hamites, or the Ethiopians. Also, you shall be slain by my sword, and he will make stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Locks shall lie down in the midst of her. All the beasts of the nations, both the cormen and the bittern, shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there's no one beside me. How she has become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in. Everyone that passes by her shall hiss and wag by his hand. The judgment of the nations. This is Romans or Rumayim 118.32. For the kusa, for the wrath of Alua, is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Hold the truth in unrighteousness. So you know the truth. You know we're the people of the book. But you still want to push the lies. You want to attach the lies to the truth. Or those of us who are the chosen people of the most high, but are essentially saying that the other nations cannot make it just because they're Esau. The other nations cannot make it because of the color of their skin, even if they've cleaved, even if they've accepted their position, even if they acknowledge our Alua, our Mashiach, and us as his people. The truth in unrighteousness, twisting the word of the most high, adding to it, taking away from it. It says that his wrath, his kasaf is revealed from heaven against the unrighteous of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. These pastors, these false teachers, those pushing this lie of Christianity, there's a judgment coming. Because that's which may be known of Alua is manifest in them. For Alua has shown it unto them. So certain things have been revealed by the hands of the Most High. But they irresponsibly twist it, change it, and add to it. Oh, man, hold on a second, y'all. Somebody just popped up on my notifications. Give me one second. I don't want these notifications to keep popping up, so I'm just going to close this other tab. Okay, wonderful. All right. So the Most High has revealed certain things to people but they're twisting it irresponsibly for their own destruction. For from the creation of the world, the invisible things of Yahuwah are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and divinity, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew Alua, they glorified him not as Alua, neither were they thankful. Remember, I talked about being grateful for what you have, even though we may not have much. Be thankful that you woke up this morning. Be thankful he's pulled you into the truth. Be thankful you can call on his name and he will hear you. But become vain in their imaginations 
and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, to understand this a little bit better, I highly suggest watching my teaching why too much knowledge can be dangerous because knowledge can puffeth up. Knowledge puffeth up. Knowledge puffeth up. This is why even with me, even with what I understand, what I know about the Bible, what I know about the scriptures, I have to use that responsibly and not allow myself to be idolized, not allow myself to be, you know, propped up by people. That's why most of the time I say all esteem to Yahuwah. Because it's not about me. It's about Yahua, Yahusha. I don't want to be exalted. I'm nothing. I'm a dirty rag, okay? It's all about Yahua, Yahusha, ultimately. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the esteem of the incorruptible Alua into an image made like to corruptible man, white Jesus, the white G-O-D. The white man is divine. The white man this, the white man that. That is exactly what this is talking about. Whitewashing the scriptures. Whitewashing the Israelites. Whitewashing the Messiah. Right here. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, Alua also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of Alua into a lie, Christianity. Christianity, anybody? And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is Baruch forever. Who is Baruch Alam Aman, Baruch forever Aman. For this cause, Alua gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women, did change the natural use into that which is unnatural and is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, which is shameful, disgusting, homosexuality, the way of the heathens. This is what he's talking about. Even the women left the natural use of the man. Man was created for woman, and woman was created for man. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. That homosexual stuff comes from the heathens, period, point blank. <sighs> okay, continuing on. Men with men working that which is unseemly or shameful and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain Alua in their knowledge, Alua gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Alua, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Alua, that they have, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So it's not so much the, the fact that you commit sin and you know it's wrong, it's your love affair with the wickedness. It's your love affair with the evil. It's the love affair with your transgressions, which makes him angry. Knowing the judgment of Alua, knowing what's coming to you. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I've come across so many people like this, twisting the scriptures constantly. They can talk about Esau and his destruction. They can talk about these nations being destroyed. But when it comes to how they present themselves before certain people, when it comes to the destruction that can come from that same Alua, if they're doing any of these things. That's why we got to be careful, Yasharal. We need to make sure if we do accuse others that we are we are able to stand blameless before the Most High. He loves us, but remember, only a remnant of Yahuda will be saved. 
This is Zachariah, who's Zechariah 14, 9 through 12. And Yahuwah shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Yahuwah and his name one. And all the land shall be turned as a plain from Gaba to Raman, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Ban Yamin or Benjamin's gate into the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Canaan all unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Yerushalayim shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahuwah will smite all the people that have fought against Yerushalayim. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand up on their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Whew, graphic. Yashiyahu, Isaiah 13, 6 through 20. How ye, for the day of Yahuwah is at hand and it shall come as a destruction from all shall die. Therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of Yahuwah comes, cruel, both with wrath. Okay, so kasaf and fierce kaas, anger. Cruel, both with wrath and anger. To lay the land desolate, he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of the Shamayim and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So when you equate this to, to the, uh, the three days of darkness, more signs. Um, hold on. Marquia just sent, him, uh, sent me a comment. Let me see. Let me open it up. Hold on one sec, sis. Pull this up. Stay. All right, Marquia says, um, ah, can you could you show a pic of Queen Elizabeth wearing that badge? Yes, definitely. Let me show y'all real quick. Let me close this out. And let me share my screen. I posted this on my story, or not on my story, but on my uh, YouTube. Give me one second here. Okay, sorry, y'all. <laughs> um... And this is why a lot of these nations have a judgment coming. But I just want to show this in case you guys didn't see this. Um, so let's take a look at this real quick. So this is Queen Elizabeth right here. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me full screen this. Okay, it's full screen. Wonderful. All right. So this is Queen Elizabeth right here. Okay. This is her pennant. All right, that she wears on this on this gown she has. But when you scroll in, you see this white angel. But look at that. Stumping on the head of a black man. Whoo, boy. When I saw that, oh, boy, it irritated my Ruach. And that's why I'm telling you, Yashara, you should be calling on the judgment of the nations that hate us. Because us telling them to fear the most high, and even though they want to claim that, you know, they're the chosen and all this other stuff, they read the Bible for themselves. They don't realize that these judgments is really about them. And so they become emboldened to show stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that she's wearing this proves the hatred. Now, are you surprised? She's the fallen bloodline. She is a whorite, a descendant of the whorites. And this is how they feel about us. Not only will I wear it on my pendant, I'll let the whole world see that I'm wearing it, considering she's a public figure. But yeah, so there's a judgment coming to these people. You know what I'm saying? 100%. But uh, yeah, we're going to continue on. Crystal is in the building. Shalom, sis. Good to see you. All esteem to y'all. Oh, she definitely is evil. There's a judgment coming to that woman. 100%. Well, I mean, she's not even here anymore. But the family that she's connected to, the serpent seed, oh, yeah, they're going to get it. And if she really did pass away, she's in that section of Shaul or Sheol that where there's torment, darkness, until that day of judgment, that great white throne, that's where she's going to be until that time. But, yeah, we're almost done with this, family. Let me get back to this. Um, 
Maurice Marshall says the false teachers will see the truth unfolding and because of pride and ties, they want to come out. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, if, 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 if them seeing the false teachers and the things that these people are prophesying that are not biblical, you know, is enough to make them leave the church and seek the most high in truth. You know, that's a good thing, I would say. All right. Let me get back to this, y'all. All right. We're almost done with this study. All right. OK, so. Uh, this is um, we were reading Yasu Yahu. Yahuwah comes cruel, both with uh, wrath and fierce chaos, to lay the land desolate, for he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, for the stars of the heaven and constellations thereof shall not give her light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will shafat, or judge the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness. Because the arrogance of the proud... Uh, Sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Sometimes for some reason, it always duplicates what I just read and then moves it over. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of a fear or Ophir. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth and shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahuwah or the Kasaf of Yahuwah, Sabaoth, and in the day of his fierce Kaas. And it shall be as the chase row and as a sheep that no man takes up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined up to them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their women ravished. Ooh. Behold, I stir up the Madai against them which shall not regard silver and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children, and Babal, the glory of kingdoms. The beauty of the Kazadim's excellency shall be when Alua overthrew Sadum and Amura, Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in with generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabim pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Yashiahu, Isaiah 63, 1 through 6. This is about Edom. Who is this? That comes from Adum or Edom with dyed garments from Basra. It's talking about Yahusha. Now, if you've read, if you've watched my video, the many misconceptions of Yahusha the Messiah, a lot of people believe Yahusha is coming to bring love and peace. No, he is coming to smite our enemies, smite our oppressors. And the reason why it says with dyed garments is because Yahusha is going to shed so many people's blood. He's going to depopulate so many people. His robe is going to be drenched in blood. His whole, his whole robe is going to be bloody. That's what they're not teaching you. This is what is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I speak that in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore are you red in your apparel? See, the blood is covering his garments. And your garments like him that treads in the wine press or the wine fat. And Yahusha says, I've trod in the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them in my chaos, my anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. Woo! Boy. So he has judgment, not just for Edom, but even for those who transgress. And we know this is a prophetic uh, scripture because it talks about Edom being completely destroyed and, sh and blood being shed and Yahusha coming back to, you know, slay the nations. But even those who have transgressed or rejected the Messiah that are even of his own people, which is why it says, I will tread down the people in my anger and drunk in fury. So this is not just for Edom, but even for our own people that transgress against the most high. This is Nahum 1, 1 through 5, the burden of Nineveh, the Safar book of the vision of Nakum, the Alakashi, 
all or Alua is jealous and Yahuwah revenges. Yahuwah revenges and is furious. Yahuwah will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. Yahuwah is slow to chaos and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahuwah has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry, dries up the rivers. Bashan languishes and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell are therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his chaos or anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. Woo, boy, hold on. Let me get into the comments. We're almost done with this lesson. Let me read. Uh, yes, our people are hard-headed. Um, Zion Rain says, yes, our people are hard-headed. I've reached out my hand all day long to a rebellious people who walks in a way that's not right, provoking me to continually to my face. Isaiah chapter 65, verses two through three. Absolutely, absolutely hard-headed. And I just want our people to get it right. That's why I'm saying this. Strong words for strong judgment. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yahusha is not coming to play. I mean, the Bible, when the Bible refers to Yahua as a man of war, that man of war will be displayed through his son, Yahusha, who's coming to bring destruction, depopulation. It's not a pretty, pretty situation. And this is why most people would rather accept the anti-Messiah because he's bringing a false peace. Yahusha said, I did not come to bring Shalom. I came to bring a sword. But Christianity is teaching you the opposite. That's why you see images like this. Let me show you real quick. Give me one second. This is why you're seeing goofy images like this. <laughs> I low key kind of find it funny. Goofy stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? Where you got JC holding the lamb, kissing kissing babies, you know what I'm saying? Hugging everybody, walking around with these, you know, children on his shoulders. They have made him soft. This is not how he's coming. He is coming with destruction, blood being shed. Let me show y'all something else. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm about to take you to my Facebook real quick. I did a post about this. So let me just show you guys real quick. Um, but I highly suggest checking out my series um, or my, my episode on the many misconceptions of Yahusha because it helps you understand um, what he's really coming to do. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's not going to bring, you know, a shalom when we get to the kingdom. He definitely will. But judgment has to come first. All right, here we go. So this is the post that I did right here. Let me show y'all, share my screen. So this is what I said. I said, Yahusha is coming with a sword. Don't get caught lacking. He shall be called Malak HaMalakim, Uadun HaAdunim, King of Kings, Master of Masters. And what did Yahusha say? Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. Mathoth Yahu, Matthew 10, 34. This is... Uh, Revelations are Kazun 19, 11 through 16. And I saw and opened and behold a, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in Zadakah, Ushafath, righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called ha Dabar Shah Alua. The word of Alua and the armies which were in the Shamaim followed him up on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. So he's not coming to hug the nations, kiss the nations, chill with the nations, restore the nations. No, he's coming to smite them. And he shall rule with the rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Yahuwah Sabaoth. And on his vesture, on his thigh, is a name written, Malak HaMalakim U'adun HaAdanim. This is what the true depiction of the Messiah should look like. Blood, 
blood, blood on the sword, the sword drunk with blood, his garments drunk with blood. This is what he's coming to do. Okay. It's not coming to bring shalom. Not until we get to the kingdom, but he's going to smite our enemies first. All right, reading some more of this. Uh, F.O. Judah says, Yahuwah Sabaoth going to be looping heads. Facts. <laughs> Facts, Aki. He ain't coming to play. He ain't coming to play. Markia says, uh, Thuda Ak, these are the principalities and spiritual weakness in high places of the world that goes against Yahuwah and persecutes the children of Yasharal. This is why judgment's coming, right? Right. And the thing is, these nations have had plenty of time to repent, but they don't want to. And now that the, the, the and what makes it worse, Yasharal, is now that the truth is being revealed on a massive level, that hatred is going to is going to build up even worse. It's going to be even worse. Then at that point, there's going to be no excuse because the truth has been revealed. And that's just made you, you know, stir up more hatred towards his people. So woe unto you. Um, let's see. Reading some more of these comments. TNH is ingenious at all. He does the manna bread. What what's TNH? I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, you got to clarify that for me. Um, reading some more of these comments. He be war facts. He's coming to bring war. This is why we need to talk about this fake rapture. People really don't get it. Yeah, sis. Uh, Tashara, one of our uh, moderators from the Discord, she told me she's in the chat. Shout out to her. She told me that you said that you want you guys wanted me to touch on the fake rapture. Um, I probably will. There is a person who did a really good video on it, though, which is which is um, truth unedited. But when you factor in the wilderness and you factor in that Jacob will be saved from the time of Jacob's trouble, it destroys the rapture. So maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, I, I definitely want to do a video on the second exodus for sure. But I have to see what Yahweh wants me to do about it. But honestly, bro, if, if the Christians are saying it, obviously it's false. Uh, but Truth on Edit did a really, really good video on disproving the fake rapture. I mean, this 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 pre-trib rapture thing. Not saying Yahusha doesn't have a second coming because he does. Obviously, he's only coming one time. But that's what that's why it doesn't make sense because according to the Christians, their belief is that Yahusha is going to come and rapture the Christians, right, before the tribulation, they're going to be taken into heaven. Then after the tribulation, those who reject the mark of the beast will be saved. So he's going to come back a second time. That's three times, bro. That's the first coming he had. That's the pre-tribulation rapture coming he has. And then that's also after those who refuse to take the mark of the beast that are persecuted, he's going to come redeem. That's three different comings. The Bible says that there's going to be a second coming, meaning he came once and he's coming one more time. That's it. There's not all these separate instances. And why, when he comes, would he come for Christians, pagans, heathens, people that don't even keep his laws and commandments? Why would he come for them, but not come for his chosen? who he was sent to first, who he was sent for. That doesn't make any sense, dude. That, that doesn't make any sense. Matter of fact, bro, since I'm talking about Ron right now, I'm going to send you guys uh, Truth Unedited. For those who don't know who he is, I'm going to send you his video on the pre-trip rapture because that, that video is just, it tells you everything you need to know. I just feel like his teaching was so good. I'd rather refer people to that. Um. Unless Yahuwah says different. All right. So let me just share this. I'm going to just share this in the chat. This is our beloved Ak, Truth Unedited. Now, this dude is the truth, man. I've been following him for a while. Um, he's called Truth Unedited for a reason. He don't mince words. He going to give you the straight up biblical truth. So this is the link right here to Truth Unedited. Let me just show you his channel real quick for those who may not be familiar with him. Okay. But he is also a Yahudi and um, his teachings are on point. So I posted in the chat, and I'm just going to show you for those who don't know who he is. This is his channel right here. He's got lots of playlists, lots of videos. As a matter of fact, let me just go to his playlist so I can show you. So undercovering, uh, uncovering falsehoods, world history, 
the danger of religion, such as Christianity, um, the day of Yahuwah, what they call the day of the L-O-R-D, history of mind control, how to understand the Bible, current events, everything you need to understand about this book and, and about the Abari way, come here. He got a whole playlist for you. The rapture, how false it is, why he uses the Abari names, how to prepare for end times, histories of the Yahudin. Um, how to read the Bible, hijackers. I, you know, I know I, I appreciate that people come to me to learn stuff. And I, I do appreciate that. I do. But there are also other people you can also follow if there's something you might specifically want me to teach on that someone might also have already made a video on that I haven't got to yet. So I do appreciate you guys come to me for questions and stuff. But there's other channels you can also follow too that also probably maybe answer some of your questions. And I don't, a lot, it's a lot of Israelites out here to teach. I don't follow all of them because some of their doctrine is off. But Truth Unedited, I've been watching him faithfully for about nine plus years. Every Friday, I've seen dang near every video he's done. So I recommend Truth Unedited. The link is right here in the chat if you want to check him out, subscribe, and just check out some of his playlists. Also, I suggest his history of religion series because it explains where all these religions came from and what the true purpose of them is. So shout out to Brother Ron from Truth Unedited. All right, let's finish this up. We're almost done, family. All right. Okay, so continuing on, we just read Yahu, Jeremiah 30. This is Yahshiahu Isaiah 42, 12 through 17. Let them give esteem unto Yahuwah and declare his praise in the islands. Yahuwah shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time held my peace. So he's been long, he's been long suffering. He's been patient. I've been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands. And I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in the paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images. They say to the graven images, you are our Lua. So to idol worshipers, your day is coming too. And to the melanated nations, to the melanated nations that have had a hand in our destruction, to those that oppressed us, to those African Hamite tribes that sold us to the Europeans, to the Ishmaelites, and every melanated nation that comes from the Psalms 83 conspiracy, your judgment is coming too. This ain't just white folks. Y'all going to get it too. Just know that. Kazun, Revelations 19, 11 through 16. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat up on it was called faithful and true. We just read that, but I'll read it again. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew, but he himself he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called Ha Dabar Shah Aluwa, the word of Yahuwah. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in wine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. That with it he smites the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads in wine presses of the fierceness of the wrath of Yahuwah Sabaoth, and he has on his vesture on his thigh a name written Malak Ha Malakim U Adun U Adunim. King of kings, master of masters. This is your Kaza call, Ezekiel 7, 12 through 19. The time has come. The day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For Kasoth is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself to the iniquity of his life. They have blown the shofar even to make all ready, but none goes to battle for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword. He that is in the city and famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys. All of them mourning, everyone for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble. All knees shall be weak as water. 
They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror shall come over them, uh, cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of Kasaf of Yahuwah, wrath of Yahuwah. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bellies, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. And this is your cause of call, Ezekiel 25, 12. Thus says Yahuwah, because that Edom has dwelt against the house of Yahuda by taking vengeance and has greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, says Yahuwah, I will stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it and will make it desolate. From Damon and from Dedan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of the people, Yasharal. So even Yasharal will be, Yahuwah will give us the opportunity to slay Edom. I have people tell me, oh, we shouldn't have revenge in our hearts. We shouldn't, you know, da 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 da. But then why does Yahuwah say that I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Yasharal, and they shall do an Edom according to my anger? Yasharal will, not Yahuwah. He's going to let us destroy Esau. That's why I think there's so much of a stirring up of our anger when it comes to Esau specifically, because there's a time and a place where Yahuwah will let us avenge ourselves of Esau. It's clearly right here. I'm going to read it one more time. I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Yasharal. They shall do an Edom according to my anger, according to my fury, and they, Edom, shall know my vengeance says Yahuwah. Mm, 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 mm. Powerful. All right, y'all. This concludes our study for today. Yahuwah is love, but he is also very terrible and great and relentless. You do not want to be on the receiving end of his kasaf or wrath. The story of the beginning and end is already written. You just have to make a decision on what side of the story you fall under. If you love Yahuwah, you prove that by obedience. It is the greatest form of love. Keep his Torah, keep his commandments, accept his son, Yahusha. All right, y'all, that's it um, for the lesson today. Uh, I'm going to open up the lines if anybody wants to jump in, and I'll pin it to the chat. Just in case anybody has any thoughts, any lessons, anything about the lesson, or just, just thoughts in general, I'm opening up the chat here. You are limitless now says, what Bible are you reading from? Uh, I usually use the C. I go between when I'm online and I'm doing teachings and stuff like that. I read from the Cifer and I also read from the, uh, a website called Magala or Magala. So the Cifer and the Magala are the main ones I use um, online. When I'm when I'm just like, you know, regularly posting scripture, I also use the Cifer and I literally have my Cifer right in front of me. It's one of my favorite books because it has all the books. All right, y'all, I'm posting a link in the chat here. I'm gonna go through some of your chats and let me pin it to the top of the chat as well. All right, so I'm opening up the line to anybody that wants to call in. If you have any questions or anything about the lesson you wanna speak on, feel free to jump in. Um, Do you believe in the 12 tribes chart? Uh, no, I don't. The 12 tribes chart is garbage. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially teaching that these other nations are Yasharal when clearly they're not. I mean, all 12 tribes were Negroes. There's no way to debunk that. And to those that are teaching that, you know, Issachar and these other nations are Yasharal, that is a lie. The 12 tribes chart was created by this guy who said he had a dream from the Most High. But the 12 tribes chart has done nothing but cause confusion, even so much so where you literally have Asian people claiming to be Israelites. So it's 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 definitely a snare and it's leading people astray. Open Diary has definitely has some false teachings there. Um, yeah, that's why, like I said, I stopped watching her because I mean I I knew about her, but some of her teachings are definitely off. So I'm just not interested in, in watching her videos at all. Um they looking for a lamb and about to get a lion. Exactly. They looking for a lamb but they're going to get the lion of Yahuda. They're going to get an Ari. Ari is lion in a barry. That's what they're going to really get. Austin Yahuda. Uh, let's see. Reading some more of these comments. 
What do you think about praying in Yahusha's name? I mean, listen, y'all, when it comes to Pilaw or praying, I mean, for me, essentially, I I, I, I say, it, you know, in Yahusha's name, because listen, I believe Yahuwah is Yahusha. He is Yahuwah in the flesh. Like, I know some people reject that, and but matter of fact, let me just pull this up. While we waiting for people to jump in, I'm going to prove it. So we're going to go off the word of the Most High, and we're going to take the Most High's word for what it says. Let's prove it. Matter of fact, I got uh, I could just go to my um, my blog because I have a bunch of scriptures about this. Make sure to check out my teaching on this because there's not really any way you can say that Yahuwah is not Yahusha if you really, really read the word for what it says. So I'm going to prove it because I have a blog here and I have all the scriptures. I did a teaching. This was probably one of the first teachings I did on this channel. So let's go to it. And let's take a look. And I'm going to go through so many scriptures and like I said, if anybody wants to jump in and chat or jump in on the live, the link is pinned to the top. Let me just make sure it is. Uh, hold on a second. Yep. Okay, cool. We're going to go to my blog here and we're going to go through some of these scriptures. But if you just have doubts about it, I would highly suggest checking out my um, checking out my channel and checking out that video. Okay. Let me see here. Wait a minute. Uh, do, 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 do. Give me one second, family. I'm trying to pull this thing up here. Hold on a second. Go to my blog. And like I said, if you guys are looking for all the scriptures I shared today, they are always going to be available on my blog, just in case you might want them for yourself. Okay. So let me go to my pages on here. Let me go to Yahuwah is Yahusha study. We're going to just go through some of these scriptures and we're going to see what they actually say. Can we prove Yahuwah is Yahusha? Is that actually biblical? Let's take a look. Let me share my screen. All right. So I did like a whole breakdown of this and all these notes, like I said, are available. But we have to look at what scripture says, okay? So in Dabarim or Deuteronomy 6, 4, Masha teaches a song to the children of Yasharal, proving he, Yahuwah, is one single being. Shama Yasharal, Yahuwah, Alua Hinu, Akai, which means here, Yasharal, Yahuwah, your Alua is one, okay? So he's one. So to say that Yahuwah and Yahusha are two separate beings goes directly against Torah. This is Deuteronomy 6, 4, but we can keep going. Yasha Yahu, 42a, I am Yahuwah, Ahaya Yahuwah, that is my name, and my esteem I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So he says that that's his name. He gives his esteem to no other. So he's going against his own words if he's literally telling you that you know, Yahusha would be a separate being to be worshipped because he is the Messiah. He literally is the Messiah. Well, we're going to keep going. Right here, Yahshayahu, 45, 5 through 6. I am Yahua, and there's no one else. There is no Alua besides me. I girded thee, thou hast not known me. Okay? Yashiyahu 45, 21, declare you and bring it forth. Let them take counsel together who's shown this from ancient time, who's declared it of old. Have an eye. There is no Alua besides me, a just all and a savior. And a savior. There is no one besides me. Our father is also our savior, y'all. Hold on. We got more we're going to go through. Now, the 20 year duo disproven. Yashiyahu 43.3, for I am Yahuwah, the Kadash, one of Yasharal, thy savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Yashiyahu 43.11, even I am Yahuwah, besides me there is no savior. Now, some people take this scripture out of context and say, so there is no Messiah. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that the Messiah in the flesh is the father. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that there is Yahuwah and there's Yahushu. The Ruach is greater than the flesh. The flesh sheds blood. The flesh dies. Yahuwah is eternal. 
So the Ruach will always be greater. So people be like, well, you know, Yahusha said that the father is greater than I, right? But let me give you an example. Some, some people say, how can the father be the son at the same time? Right? That's, that's one of the things people use to try to disprove this. So I'm an artist. I'm a video editor. I'm a music producer. I'm a, uh, you know, a teacher of the truth. That doesn't make me several different people. Those are all functions, roles, and characteristics of me who was a singular being, but that doesn't make me several different people. You might be a mother, you might be a daughter, you might be an auntie, you might be a cousin. That doesn't make you several different people. Let's keep going. Um, this is Thahalim 10621. They forget Alua, their savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Maccabim Shalashi, 3rd Maccabee 629. He said these things and they released the same moment, having now escaped death. Praise Alua, their Kadash Savior. Bro, there's just so many examples of this. There's so many examples of this. Um, okay, one of my favorite verses to go to. Yehukanan chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was Ha Dabar, the word. U Ha Dabar. And the word was with Yahuwah. And the word was Yahuwah. Now we scroll down to verse 14 of that same book, Yahukanan. And Hakdabar was made Bashar. The word was made Bashar and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his esteem. The esteem is of the only begotten son of the father, full of Kassad and Amah. So the word became flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahuwah. The word was with Yahuwah. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his esteem. Yahuwah said he gives his esteem to no other. Yahuwah is Yahusha. Period. Because then you have to throw out everything else that he said. Now, you remember when Masha or Moses was at the burning bush. And he said, he said, Ahaya Ashar Ahaya, meaning I am. Many times in scripture, Yahusha said, Ahaya. Yahukanan 824. I said, therefore, unto thee, you should die in your sins. For you, if you believe not, that Ahaya, I am he, you shall die in your sins. There's just so many examples, y'all. I don't want to go through all of these, but bro. All of these scriptures you can read for yourself, but they prove your is Yahusha. It's just that simple. All right, uh, reading some more of these comments here. Um, according to the Z uh, Zadok, uh, Zadok I calendar, we should be celebrating Passover. It's coming Tuesday, 4 2, and Feast of Unleavened Bread in the 4 9. Any suggestions of ways to celebrate? This will be our first time. So, actually, uh, for uh, the Zadok calendar, you have to understand that, according to my understanding of the scriptures, it's, it, it should be Monday night, Monday evening at sunset. That's when we're keeping Pesach. Um, so uh, to answer your question, it should be Monday. Monday at sunset should be Pesach. Okay. Um, and then unleavened bread is going to be that very next sunset, the next day for seven days. Okay. And um, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so. I talked to people in the Discord about this, but what we were talking about doing is doing a fast leading up to Pesach. So maybe starting that fast, um, honestly, we could start it tonight after Shabbat is over. You know what I'm saying? Now, for some of you guys who don't know or never did fasting, we'll keep it very, very simple, okay? Um. Now, I understand some people are not able to necessarily fast for an, uh, um, an extended period of time. So we're going to just probably do something like a Daniel fast. Okay. And um, in the Daniel fast, you are essentially just eating like vegetables, fruits, nuts, things like that. Because when we finally celebrate Pesach, we are going to be able to have 
lamb and unleavened bread and all those great things of the feast day. So I just think we should just start with that. Something simple from uh, tonight all the way until Pesach, essentially. Now, if you don't want to do that, uh, you know, I, I, I want us to be on one accord. So what do you guys think? Like, um, let me know. Now, me, I fasted, you know what I'm saying, long periods of time. You know what I'm saying? But not everyone, your body may not be used to that. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to, to work your way into it because you don't want to make yourself sick. Or you don't want to have a reaction because you haven't kind of built yourself up to it. Spread Love says, so Unleavened Bread starts on Tuesday. Um, it would be, yeah, yeah, it would be. It would be the next day. Matter of fact, here, let me just show you guys this real quick. Um, let me go to the Discord because I actually posted this. I'll just put it on the screen just in case you guys might be asking questions. And just wants to see one more time when everything is. And I'm just going to post it. Give me one second. Okay. All righty here. So let me just open this up here. And I will share my screen. And we will take a look at this. Okay. That's what I wanted. Okay. All right, family. Let me pull this up on my screen. Let me show this to you so you can see it. And you can just look at this one more time. And if you're on your phone, just screenshot it. Now, I posted this link in the in the uh, Pesach video. I posted it in the Discord already. But just in case you might just need to see it again, just for confirmation, I'm going to just post it on the screen. Give me one second. Hold on one sec. Okay. All right. So let me just take you to this screen here, just so you can see everything one more time. But like I said, screenshot it if you must, and I'll also post the link in the in the uh, the chat. Boom. So like I said, the equinox started on March nineteenth. Okay. And now we're gonna scroll down to the feast days. Okay, April first at sundown is when Pesach begins. It ends sundown April 2nd, 2024, okay? That's the 14th day of this month we're in, which is the first month of Yahuwah's year, okay? Matzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, begins Tuesday, April 2nd at sundown. So when Pesach ends, which is sundown of April 2nd, that's when matzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, begins, okay? And you're going to do that seven days. So from April 2nd to April 8th, or I'm sorry, April 9th. April 2nd to April 9th, sundown, April 2nd is when it starts. And all the way to April 9th, sundown is the seven days, okay? So I'm going to post this in the chat just in case you need a reminder, okay? And this has, it has um, the scriptural references. It also reminds you of when it's gonna be and all that good stuff. And if you want this adopt calendar, I mean, you could download this adopt calendar. I just feel like this is a little bit more like uh, straight up. So if you want this adopt calendar, I can post it, but this is just, this is probably the best for you. So you don't get confused. All right, so that's that's the link right there if you want to just download this or take a screenshot. That's the best thing to do. Um, all right, so as far as the feasting thing, um, the fasting thing. So if you guys want, we can do, if you just need some time, maybe because I'm kind of, you know, springing this on you guys, maybe we could start the fasting uh, Sunday. Start Sunday, and then we'll go from Sunday, Pagan Sunday, all the way until it's time to enjoy our Pesach. So it'll just be easier. You know what I'm saying? Spread Love says, I brought some lame from Kroger's, and it was only three pieces. Oh, lamb. Okay, okay, lamb. I, you know, I was like, lame? I was like, you brought some lame from Kroger's? I was like, what? <laughs> 
You said I brought some lamb from Kroger's. It was it only has three pieces for twenty dollars. Is delicious, but very little. Yeah. Um. So for lamb, for those who are not preparing it yourself, if you want to know where to get lamb, I would suggest probably like, uh, you can go to somewhere and go to like a um like a place that that like like a butcher. You know what I'm saying? Most most likely they have lamb meat. Um, or even if you had to and you don't have access to get lamb or anything like that, you could just order some. You know what I'm saying? Instacart or uh, DoorDash. There's restaurants that have lamb. You know, it, it's, just, it's essentially you just want to try to get some lamb. But yeah, lamb is expensive because it's it's uh, it's not as common as, as something like chicken and beef and stuff like that. So you know, just make sure that you're doing this stuff ahead of time. Do not wait to the last minute. I, I I do not implore you to wait until Monday to go run to the store and go buy lamb because sometimes it takes time to prepare it. If you're going to prepare it, unless you're going to just go to a butcher or go to someone that prepares it for you, you can do that too. But I would just say, do it before Monday. That's the best way to go. You just want to be ready for when it's time to, you know, do it. Now, as far as the preparation process, I, I remember the first Pesach I did, I actually literally prepared it the day of before nightfall. It didn't take long to prepare it at all. So you can prepare it on the day of. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I actually did because I didn't know what I was doing the first time I, I had Pesach. But um, yeah, so you know you can do that as well. But go ahead and get your unleavened bread now. Go ahead and get your herbs. You know, if you're going to get, um, you know, basil or if you're going to get your um, thyme or whatever herbs you're going to have with it, do that. Get your unleavened bread and get your wine. I haven't got my wine yet. I went to Myers. Uh, I'm, I'm laughing because Marky, I literally just mentioned Myers. I went to Myers to see if they have any kind of wine for Pesach, but they didn't have any. So I'm going to probably, oh, yeah, see, she mentioned Myers. Yada, yada, ooh. Um, I went to Myers, which is a grocery store, and um, they didn't have, they only had one wine, which is the 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 Minuswitz wine. So I said, okay, I don't really want that. I want to see what else they got. So I'm going to just go to, if you want to get Pesach wine, Passover wine, wine specifically for Passover, you're most likely going to have to go to a wine store that sells like a, a, a wide variety of wine to get Passover wine. Because I tried to do it and I wasn't able to get, I wasn't able to find it at the regular store. So I had to go to get wine from a wine store. So that would be what I would suggest. Um, you can with bitter herbs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said in the Pesach video um, that you can essentially um, use herbs that to your choosing because the scripture doesn't specifically say what kind of herbs they are. So you can be creative when it comes to herbs specifically. Um, let's see, reading some more. I don't eat meat. Is it okay to do the Passover without the lamb? Um, I mean, you can, uh, if you want to, I believe some people are doing that. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's more so about the lamb himself. If you accept him, I don't think you necessarily need to eat lamb to honor the Messiah, but have some wine. Have some herbs and have some unleavened bread if you if you just don't eat meat at all. Um, Melanated by Yas says, I was on the phone. I don't know if this was asked or answered, but I have questions about the lamb being unblemished and no broken bones. Okay, so I did answer this on the Pesach video. Um, there's no way to really know that unless you literally, you know what I'm saying, dealt with the person who did this. It's not so much about the lamb being exactly how it is in scripture. It's about honoring the Pesach. It's about accepting the Messiah. There's no way to really, you know, because like I said, I, I, I explained this in the Pesach video, but there are, we obviously cannot slaughter lambs in America in certain lands. They have like animal cruelty laws and stuff like that. We're just doing this to honor the feast days, to honor the Messiah, to honor Yahuwah, to honor the fact that the blood of the lamb saved our people when Yahuwah came down to smite the firstborn. So I know we can't, and I said that before, you can't really honor this 100% because they literally had to slay a lamb and find a lamb without blemish. There's no way to do that. We're more so doing this because we just want to honor the feast days. So if that makes sense, 
hopefully it does um, moving forward. But yeah, I would just suggest checking out my video on how to do Pesach. It's in um, my teachings on YouTube, the Temple of Torah. And it, te it tells you everything you need to do for Pesach. So I would check it out. Uh, let's see. Yeah, in scripture it says lamb without blemish. Right, there's no way to be able to do that though. So it's more so just about eating the lamb and just partaking in the feast days. We gave so much energy to paganism. I'm just not interested in um, participating in that. I'm going to just do the feast days because I want to honor the most high. And so we, you know, we do these feast days for that reason. Uh, let's see. It's good. We're getting back to this, but the way that it matters is the heart. Keeping it is regarding and honoring. Exactly. That's really what it's about. It's about honoring it. Eventually, we will get to a time where we will be able to do lambs without blemish and all that stuff. But for me, it's just more so wanting to just do it because I gave so much energy to, to, to paganism and Christmas and, and all these other things. You want me to post a link? Okay, hold on, sis. I got it right here. And I'm posting this link for everybody else. If you have not seen the video, please watch this video. And it gives you everything you need to know about Pesach. All the questions you have, how do I prepare? What do I need? This video will tell you everything you need as far as what you, uh, how to do this. Give me one second here. Okay, let me copy this link. Okay, all right. So this is the Pesach video. I'm posting it right here, boom. That's the video for the Pesach. Um, Cindy says, I will drink juice. I don't do alcohol either. I did Passover to honor the feast days in three. Father, I make my own other. I get excited for the feast days. Yeah, me too. I'm definitely excited about it. And to those of you who don't drink wine or that you have children and your children want to celebrate Pesach, um, you can just give them grape juice. If you don't drink alcohol, if your children are not old enough to drink, you can just do grape juice. That's that's perfect. That's fine. Um, and I explained that in the video, so be sure to check it out. Like I said, if you have not done Pesach and you didn't see the video we did on Pesach, that video will help you with everything. The true unblemished lamb has already come on, be on our behalf, so this is just to honor the Passover. Exactly. The lamb has already shed his blood. The ultimately unblemished lamb has already come, shed his blood, and everything else. So we're just honoring that he did this, and that's ultimately what it is for me. All right, I'm going to bring somebody on. Uh, Lawanda Walker, I see you in the queue, but I'm not able to bring you on because it says your mic is not connected. So you need to make sure your audio is 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 correct. And then it'll let me bring you on, okay? Um, right, he knows who, who is his. Yahusha has not lost any of us, his children. Facts. Um. Do you know of a good online by hand source for all books of Apocrypha, prefer a bar to read? I've been using sacred text. Yeah, I, like I said, it's best to use the Cipher. I have it. Um, I just think that's the best thing to use. Is it perfect? No, but it has all the books and it uses the true names. And I just prefer that. Now, there aren't there are some books it doesn't have, like it doesn't have the, tw the Testament of the 12 Patriarchs. It doesn't have the book of Adam and Eve. It doesn't have like certain books like the Apocalypse of Paul, Apocalypse of Elijah, but it does have a lot of information in it you should check out. All right. Hello. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. How's it going? Hi. Everything hey. is going wonderful. I wanted to talk about the subject we're talking about, about the lamb and it being unblemished. Mm -hmm. Well, my understanding is Yahusha was our perfect sacrifice. Right. And us keeping Passover is done in memory of him. So we don't sacrifice animals anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the wine represents his blood. Blood, right. And that's why we do the wine and the unleavened bread and the uh, bitter herbs. But And the unleavened bread also represents his body. Yeah, that's, that's his body. Right. So we're doing all that in memory of him. It's okay. I mean, if you have your own flock of lambs and sheep, you could kill one and get your meat, but you're not doing all that stuff they was doing before he came and became that perfect sacrifice. Right, exactly. And that's what I'm trying to get people to understand is like, yeah. we don't need to sacrifice lambs. We don't need to do any of that no more because he's already come. This was before that when the Pesach was written in, in Exodus, 
there was no Mashiach yet. Exactly. Yahuwah was so getting them was in the mindset of, the of accepting him. Yeah, that was pointing to him. Mm -hmm. And he fulfilled exactly. all of those things. And so a person that doesn't eat meat, they don't have to worry about eating meat. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. They can just do the wine and the unleavened bread. And the bitter herbs if they if and the they bitter feel herbs. That. Right, exactly. But I wanted to also tell you that I really enjoy being on your screen, me and my two daughters. You know, we don't have anybody hey, in our whole city of Memphis. Hey, yeah, I know yeah. that's one of my daughters. Uh -huh. Shabbat Shalom, sis. That's Kiara Ewing and my daughter. And so I just wanted to say we appreciate you you know, going live and having these meet, even the impromptus, we be waiting on it because <laughs> we don't have a man that worship with us or anything. You know, mm -hmm. I have to kind of take the lead. And, and I know that's not supposed to be my role, but right. since we don't, I have to stand in. So I've been keeping this for, I think about, I want to say 30 years, the Lord told me come out of her. And so it's been lonely out here, and I'm loving the fact that, oh, man, y'all's people. Right. Yeah. Yes, you know, yes. and, that's, and that's why Judas we are gathered here. That's why we, we are gathered here, and that's why we have a Discord. Are you on our Discord, by the way? Well, actually, I don't have a Facebook. I tried to join the first day, but I need to figure out. No, no, out no, not, so not, not Facebook, Discord, Discord. Well, I tried to join Discord and there was something going on with my tablet. So I'm oh, going to okay. figure that out. But yes, I definitely want to join. I'm like, no, yeah. they won't let me do it. That but way, I'm, you know what I'm saying? We, we like, we, because when we're not here on live, we're on Discord. So we're all talking with each other. I'm partnering people up, you know what I'm saying? So they can have a prayer partner, someone to reach out to. That's Some, beautiful. You know, we're all talking about, you know, different things, testimonies. It's a lot of great things yeah. happening. On our discourse. Wonderful. I mean, it's a wonderful time to be alive. I'm a 61 year old mother of some, what's my son, 45, and I got grandkids, and <laughs> I'm just loving this awakening. I I love it. I mean, I pray for you all and the brothers. We listen to all of y'all. We listen to you. We listen to Truth, un, unedited, and Moray. Y'all are our three Morays. <laughs> for, right, for, right. For, then the Bean, is that what it's called from the Bean? You know, uh, the, uh, Nabim is, is prophets. Well, I mean, you know, some right. of y'all prophets are <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm serious. But I, I'm gonna get off of here now. I just want to bless you and let you know we're praying for all of y'all's people to wake up. So, yes, we people. all are. And, and thank you so much for you know clarifying the whole lamb thing because you know, we are the lamb has already come, we're doing this to honor the lamb. That right, do it till he come back. We're supposed to do this in remembrance of what he did when he went on Calvary until he come back. We're Absolutely. supposed to keep this. And I've been out here doing it alone for all these years, and I'm just happy right now. I got joy. My joy is here. So bless you, brother. All right, bless you too, sis. Blessing to you and your daughters. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I right, love y'all. All right, shalom. Love you, though. What up, Ak? Wow. Shabbat Shalom, fam. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, all blessings to you and your family. Thank you much. Yeah, thanks to this, uh, to our sis, our Aki, um, Ida Jones. She says she's been out here alone. You know, she sound like Elijah, mm -hmm. but you're who are the reserve, you know, like 7,000 of us for her so welcome aboard and uh but yeah thank you bro for the for the for the platform you know i'll just say my little piece here uh to the panel okay um so i just wanted to say as far as the fasting thing family um i want us to all be on one accord with this because i don't want people to be all like oh yeah you know i'm down to do it and then we set a time and then people forget. We all want to be on one accord, okay? Like as the body of believers in Yahuwah, Yahusha. So what I would suggest is not today because I'm kind of springing this up on you guys on this, on this episode. So what I think might be best is if we do this tomorrow, okay? Leading into Pesach because Pesach is going to be um, Monday, Monday, Monday at sunset. So I would say... 
from Sunday, I'm trying to think how to do this because some people may not be able to handle such a heavy, heavy fast. We'll start with this. We'll start with this. We'll start with this. Skip breakfast, skip lunch, and have dinner, okay? And, you know, just, just start there. You know what I'm saying? And then as far as, you know, going into Pesach, that day we can also do another skip lunch, skip dinner and just do it like that. You know what I'm saying? Just to start it out because Yahuwah, he's looking at you wanting to make the sacrifice. Okay. And, and also I'll say this too, when it comes to Pesach, it's not just about honoring the Messiah and honoring Yahuwah and all that, but it's also about purging your body purging your mind of, of unleavened bread or, or of leaven, whatever you have in your heart, whatever you're holding on to, we're in a new biblical year. So you want to purge yourself and present yourself a living sacrifice, whatever you might be dealing with, whatever you got going on, you know, get that leaven out of you. You know what I'm saying? If you got to distance from some people because maybe they are bringing some thoughts into you or out of you that are not good, you know what I'm saying? That, that 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 may be something to consider. Daniel Roller says, can we all uh, go out just liquids tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's a good way to do it. When I fast, bro, I don't eat anything. I just be drinking water. That's it. You know what I'm saying? The living waters. That's all we need. But yeah, uh, Healing Moon says of sin and anger. Right. You want to remove the leaven out of your heart. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the unleavened bread is about. It's seven days that... You know, you remove the physical leaven out of your house, but also the leaven of your heart, the leaven of your ruach. Purge it out. Somebody done did something wrong to you, forgive them. If your husband has said something you didn't like, forgive them. Your wife said something you did, something you didn't want her to do, forgive her. I just feel like the times we're living in, we just can't be carrying around all this baggage that we, we tend to hold on to. You know, a lot of the, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the sins of our fathers and, and what we've, what we've had passed down to us, we've got to really, really break free from that because it can hold us down. You know what I'm saying? And we want to enter into this time of great revelation. This is a time of rejoicing for Yashara, especially with the signs, the most high sending. And so we want to be sure that we are, we are, we are on one accord. And walking in righteousness so that we can be there for that great revelation, that great sign to prepare as our as our father moves forward to bring us out of these lands. Um, unapologetically real says, I'm in the UK. Do I start a fast in the morning? It's past 9 p.m. here. Um, yeah. So whenever you wake up, like if you eat first thing in the morning or something like that, just skip breakfast and lunch. Wait until, you know, sundown to eat. Let's just say it like that. Starting tomorrow. Now, if you eat, you know what I'm saying, tonight or whatever, that's fine. But when you wake up tomorrow, do not eat until sundown. Okay. And also, Justin Carolla, you're in the queue. It says your, your mic is not connected. Uh, I need you to get your audio issues fixed before I can bring you in. Okay. It won't let me bring you in if, if your mic's not connected. Um, and in that time that you are fasting, you want to be seeking Yahuwah reading his word, praying to him, repenting if you need to. Fasting is, and, and filling yourself with that spiritual food. We fast from physical food, but we fill up with spiritual food, okay? And we're gonna probably gather here, maybe I, I might go live uh, the day of Pesach, right before it actually starts, just to check in with everybody. So make sure that you're, you're, you are reading the word of the most high and you are filling yourself with spiritual food while you are fasting. So is a water fast or eat nothing or eat nothing fast? I mean, when it comes to me fasting, I do drink water. I've never done a fast of no water, no food. Now, that would be considered the Yahushian fast where he had no food, no water. You know what I'm saying? I have not gotten to that point, but I do just do straight water. So I would suggest just sticking with water because like I said, some people here have not done this at all ever. And I don't want to overwhelm people. I'm just downloaded Discord. How do we connect to you? I'm about to post a link in the chat right now, sis. 
So I don't want this to be too difficult for you guys. So we're going to just do is just, just drink water. If you get hungry, just have some water. That will be how we're going to do this. And like I said, you're going to just skip lunch, skip dinner, or skip, skip lunch, skip breakfast. Pardon me. Skip lunch, skip breakfast. And you're going to um, just have water. Okay. All right. I'm posting the discord. This is the link you click to get into the discord. Let us know who you are family, because listen, there is someone that was in the Discord that uh, I, I don't want to be in the Discord because they're kind of problematic. They know who they are, and we need to know who you are. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to like secure the Discord and all of that. So just let us know who 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 you are when you do come into the Discord. Okay. All right. Um, Frank says you might have said in your video, but are we cooking and eating Passover Monday night or also Tuesday? So I did mention in the video, you have to consume the, the lamb and nothing should be left of it, on, uh, you know, in the morning. So essentially, whatever is left, you have to burn it. So just eat as much as you can eat. Don't get more than you can handle. OK, I would highly suggest going back to the video. Just rewatch the video, y'all. So you can just take some extra notes in case you might have missed something. Who the heck is messaging me, man? Gosh, they're blowing me up. I'm sorry, y'all. I just like was getting news. Just my 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 computer's just going beep 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 beep. I'm like, bro, sheesh. It's just annoying. Like, oh, couldn't deal with it. Okay, all right. My bad, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, just go back and rewatch the pace off video. That is my suggestion, just in case you might have missed something, because I I literally covered everything in that. Uh, Mariel Ann says, "All praise the Most High." Whether it's have to be grape wine or any red wine, or any kind of from the UK. Um. It can be grape wine if you want it to be. I normally get red wine because it's just a reminder of Yusha's blood. But you can do grape wine, grape juice. It doesn't necessarily have to be red wine or grape juice or grape wine. It's up to you. Um, yeah, that's that's totally your decision. Um, I wouldn't do white wine. You can, but I, you know, we're being reminded of his blood. So it's like I, I think red wine or grape wine or grape juice is 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 fine enough. Thomas Jones says, Shalom to all kings and queens that are participating in this live on this glorious Shabbat. Shalom to you, Aki. Thank you for joining us here today. All praises to Yahuwah. Um, Kylie, Kylisi says, while the fast, can we still take the leavening out of the house? Um, yeah, you have to, because for unleavened bread, you're supposed to remove all the leaven out of your house. So if you want to do that after Shabbat is over, do it now. You know what I'm saying? That way you don't have to do it because unleavened bread is about, it's symbolic of removing the leaven from your heart, removing the leaven from your life and moving it from your house. So for that seven days, you're not supposed to have anything in your house with leaven in it. So if you remember to do it, don't do it now because we're in Shabbat right now. When Shabbat is over, if you want to, I told Danielle this, our beloved sister, she's in the chat, shout out to her. I told her, if you want to just put the leaven in your car or something, just remove it out of your home. That's what the scriptures instruct. So while you're fasting, yeah, you can do that if you want to. It's up to you. Um, let me see. I'm reading some more of these comments here. Uh, just to be clear, we can salt the lamb and season with bitter herbs. Yeah. So when I made the lamb, um, I literally just seasoned it. There's not really a scripture about how it's supposed to be like prepared other than that it's supposed to be with fire. So roasted lamb would be the best way to go, or you can grill it. It's up to you. But as far as the preparation process, the seasonings and this and that, that's totally up to you. There's no standard for how that should be according to scripture. Do we need to take all the leaven out of our houses? Yes, you do. That's going to be for uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is seven days um, that you're going to be eating unleavened. And I said this before. I said this in the Pesach video. You don't have to literally just eat unleavened for those seven days. Whatever you're eating, just have an unleavened bread with it. But you want to remove everything that has leaven in your house, okay? But for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you can eat whatever you want. Just make sure every single meal you have unleavened bread with you. That's how you honor, honor it properly. Um, that's right, brother. Sorry. Thanks for real. No, you're good, Ock. You're good. Um, 
Melanated by y'all says, I love this community. All praise and esteem to y'all. Ua, Saba, Uth. All esteem to y'all. Ua. Yada, y'all. Ua. Um, Linya Huda Hushashiak says, I am in. All praises to the Most High. I'm glad. So, family, tomorrow, no breakfast, no lunch, no food. Now, you can drink water, okay? Water is not a problem. No food until sunset. Okay. And in that time, you're not eating. You're going to be eating spiritual food. You're going to be studying the Torah. You're going to be reading the scriptures. You're going to be praying, talking to Yahuwah. That's what you're, that's what fasting really is. It's essentially filling yourself with spiritual food, giving up something to give your time to the most high. And honestly, um, you know, even social media fasting is a good thing. And I'm probably at some point going to, going to suggest we do that. Take a week from getting on social media. Now, I know some of you guys don't have social media at all, which is yada yada. But breaking away from social media is going to prove to you how much of a distraction it is. And a lot of times I pull away from it because I have to. Um, so at some point, maybe not, you know, next week or anything, but eventually I'm going to suggest we all go on a social media fast, delete Facebook, delete Instagram from your phone. Now we can still gather on here and socialize as a community in Yahoo Yahusha, but these satanic platforms, you know what I'm saying? Where there's not enough righteousness being promoted, take a break from it. Where there's a lot of contention, a lot of arguments, take a break from it. Uh, Rylan Abia says, surely tear juice should, should, should not be an issue. I have a spring cold and I'm drinking tea and mango juice for vitamin and minerals. Um, I mean, you can, but I mean, if, if it's juice, I, like I said, I just suggest grape juice to you. I mean, if you're, t if you're drinking juice for vitamins and minerals, um, one day of drinking grape juice, I think is totally fine. I just think I'm just trying to get you guys to get in the mindset of just trying to do, get as close to this as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's that's ultimately what it is for me. Tomorrow's a pagan holiday. I already celebrate Passover. Oh, you already celebrated it. Oh, okay. Yeah, tomorrow's a pagan holiday, which is why it's even better. Why you're fasting on a pagan holiday. Because you were doing something for your Ua, why the Christians and those following paganism are essentially going directly against the Most High. So that's why it's even better that we're fasting tomorrow. Healing Moon, uh, Healing Moon Baya Shira says fasting will heal your body too. Absolutely. It's definitely beneficial, even as far as health wise. There's a lot of benefits to it. It's not just spiritual benefits, getting closer to the most high, presenting yourself as a sacrifice before the most high, but it also will help you with um, health reasons. My family fast is going to be awesome. I, I've been getting myself ready the last couple of weeks. I made it three days, no food. Yada, yada, ua. All esteem to the Yahuwah, oh, man. I'm glad to hear that, Ak. And the Most High will empower you because let me tell y'all, bro, straight up, I was trying to do the Yahushian fast, bro. I was trying to go straight 40 days, 40 nights, no food. And I, I made it to like two weeks, 16 days or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I think that's still pretty darn good. Shout out to Marky Ya. She became a member today. I wanted to thank you, sis. Thank you so much. And also shout out to Mike W. Uh, Makaya Banyau, who's also become a member today. All esteem to the most high. Thank y'all so much. Um, tea and juice, I was referring to fasting, so it has to be water. Yeah, tea and juice is, I wouldn't suggest that. I would not suggest tea and juice at all. Um, because... You know, when you even when you think about scientifically, when you think about calories and stuff like that, if I'm fasting, but I have something that has calories in it, that's not necessarily fasting. You know what I'm saying? And back then they didn't really have juice and teas and stuff like that. So, you know, our bodies desire stuff with calories. We desire sugar. We desire this. We desire that. It's, it, I feel like the sacrifice is greater when it's just water, you know, using Yahuwah's natural resource. I am missing something. Uh, what, what do you mean? Tomorrow, 
Uh, okay, I'm confused. Uh, Maya, yeah, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. You said you're missing something. Tomorrow's a pagan holiday. I, 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 I I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Let me know. Um, the nurse juris doc says once we start the fast, shall we continue until sunset Monday four one or sunset Tuesday four two? So, yes. So I would say that's what you should do. Is most definitely is do the fast from the moment you wake up until sundown. Okay, then you can eat you know, sundown. And then on that Monday, leading up to that Pesach that evening, you can also do the fast. So um, no food, just water. Monday, the moment you wake up till sundown when Pesach begins. Okay. And I will lead us into this. Okay. A scriptural fast is no food, no water. Yeah, I know that. I know that, Aki. But see, some people are not They've never done this before. And there's many different ways you can fast. It doesn't necessarily have to be no food, no water. We're just giving up something to give our time to the most high. Okay. So let's, let's, let's have a little bit more understanding for people who've never done this before. The, the most high is looking at the fact that you're giving up something for him. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. And that's, and actually that's not necessarily true because Daniel did a fast and it's called the Daniel fast, where he ate like vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. So to say a scriptural fast is no food, no water. In some instances, that's true. But the Daniel fast, there was food. <clears throat> Amiya Yakiya says, I'm what they call a prepper. And I have my second day, uh, have my second closet as a pantry. Can I just all leave my leaven in there and just close it and don't go in that room? I can't get rid or move all of it. It's full. Um. Mm, you said you can't remove or get rid of all of it. Mm, I don't know. I mean, the scriptures say to remove it out of your home. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's something you might have to take up with the most high. Maya Yal says, am I missing something? What are we fasting for or celebrating something? I'm confused. We're not celebrating the pagan holiday. We don't do that over here. Okay. We are fasting to get ready for Pesach. That's what we're doing. It's more about Pesach. We're preparing for Pesach. We're fasting tomorrow, and we're also fasting until sundown for Pesach. So we're not celebrating paganism. People are not, most, people, most of the time, people are not fasting on Easter. They're going to go celebrate it, eating eggs, eating holiday ham and all this stuff. We're doing something for the most high. That's essentially what we're doing. I have no where I will, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the scriptures say you're going to have to remove it from your house. So if, you know, if you're going to have to move some stuff around and just you say you can't remove it all, uh, you're going to have to do something. If it was me, I would just say I'm going to just throw it out or not throw it out, but just get it out. Put it in a car, uh, take it to somebody's house, give it away. I don't know. But the Bible says you got to remove it from your house. So if you're going to honor unleavened bread, you kind of have to do that. Um, how you're going to do it, I can't tell you. But if it was me, it's got to go. Whether it's sitting in my car, whether I give it to a homeless shelter, whatever it is, I, it, would, it would have to leave the house. Um, he was not fasting. He refused to eat. Nope, that's not, what, that's, not the, that's not what the scriptures say. Okay, there was a Daniel fast. There was a Daniel fast where he literally was, was uh, eating um. He, 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 he literally was eating like fruits and vegetables and stuff. Let me show you. Hold on a second. Give me one second. Let me pull it up. Hold on a second. Oh, all right. Um, I think that's Daniel 10. Give me one second. Yeah. Daniel 1.12. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Let me just show you. He Now, you are partially right. He did not want to eat the king's meats, but he didn't just straight up like, you know, he was eating fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. So let me just show you real quick. Okay. Let me pull this up. All right. So Daniel, let me go to the book of Daniel. 
I don't even have the scripture pulled up. Give me one second, y'all. Gotta load this up. So 10 days he did, and he was fasting, not because, you know, it was to a sense because he wasn't eating the king's meat because the kings were sacrificing these meats to idols. And so he took a stand and him and the other Hebrew boys, you know, you got Kanan Yahu, Misha'al, and Azar Yahu. And essentially they were eating vegetables and stuff like that because they didn't want to eat the meat. So let me just pull this up here. Share my screen. Okay. Um, this is Daniel. Let me just click the whole thing. I don't know why it took me here. All right, let's read it. It says, but Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And Yahuwah gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my master, the king, who assigned you food and drink. For why should we see that you were in worse condition than the youths who are of your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Kanan Yahu, Misha'al, and Azar Yahu, test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youth, who the king's food, be observed by you. Deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this manner and tested them for 10 days. So he was literally eating fruits and vegetables. He wasn't, he just wasn't eating the meat. The meat was what they sacrificed to the idols. It wasn't necessarily um, fruits and vegetables. Um, certain Ethiopians today who are descendants of Babylonians still eat raw meat. Yeah, I bet. I saw this video. I ain't going to lie. I saw a video of like these this African dude like chewing on this monkey head. And he was like giving it to his son. And I was like, man, these people are hamites for real. Just, ugh, that. In scripture, it was called a pulse. Well, you mean the fast? Possibly. Uh, Maya Johnson was saying, who, who is Yahusha? Not asking, who is Yahusha? Um, hold on, I'm gonna have to go back and read her comment. I didn't see it. Um, I believe you can down, download anything during a fast, except when you're trying to fast from. So I believe you can clean, go work. But if you're fasting from social media, no. Right. So fasting, like I said, it depends on what fast you set in your heart to do. You feel what I'm saying? So if it's a social media fast, you want you don't you want to uninstall the apps completely. You know what I'm saying? Um, and don't use social media. That time you use in social media should go to the most high. It just depends on what the fast is. So if you're doing a food fast, yeah, you can still use social media. It just depends on what you set in your heart too fast from. So just to be clear. Um, during the fast, can I clean and prepare my house for Pesach? Uh, yes, you can, because it's not, it's not Shabbat. It's just a fast. So, you know, you can still go about your daily life. You know, like if you are fasting, you can still go to work. You can still do the normal things you do as long as it's not on Shabbat. But yeah, you can still do what you normally do as long as it's not breaking the, the commandments as far as Shabbat. You can still get ready for Pesach and all of that. Um, fasting doesn't necessarily mean that you can't uh, do normal things that you do. Um also about Discord, has anyone had any issues yet? I want to accept it in the invite. It said site isn't safe. And for the app, I didn't have a lot of good reviews. Um, I suggest using Discord is safe. It definitely is. I would highly suggest just getting the app. I mean, if you're not doing it from a computer and you're doing it like from your web browser on your phone, it's going to be trash. It's not really built for that. It's better to get the app. Um, let me see. Reading some more comments. All right, family. I think I'm going to get off of here. It's been a good lesson. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have any more announcements. So once again, what I'm going to do is I am going to make, check out my community tab. 
when you get an opportunity. If you're on Follow Me on YouTube, it'll pop up on yours. And uh, essentially, Danielle says, I couldn't sign on. You couldn't sign on to Discord? Um, You were in the chat. I saw you in the chat. I don't know what email you use. You might have to do it. Oh, you know what? That's why. Because family, like I said, I have someone that I kicked out of the Discord that I don't want in the Discord. And so I put a ver uh, authentication on there. So you have to verify with your number in order to get into it. Because some people just jump in and, you know, I, I don't want just anybody coming in. So just keep that in mind. You would have to verify with your phone, uh, Danielle. Thank you. Thank you. I got that download. I just want to double check. Yeah, definitely use the app. It's just more better. I had no issues with Discord on my phone. Yeah, I don't have any issues with it either. I mean, if you're not used to it, you got to get used to it. It takes some adjustment adjustments, but it, it's a really, really good platform when you get the get the hang of it. Um, all right, y'all. I think that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to get off of here. All esteem to Yahoo, Yahusha. Thank you to everybody that has joined the stream. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Shabbat. I think I'm actually going to go to sleep. I'm kind of tired, man. Like, I went to sleep at a decent time last night, but this is feeling kind of sleepy. Oh, one more thing. Just reminds me. My song was supposed to drop uh, Friday, but I am going to be releasing it next Friday, April 5th. And it's my song, All I See Is Eat em. I know some people were asking about that song. Um, this is it right here. And I'm dropping it next Friday. Okay? So just in case people are wondering, hey, I thought you were dropping a new song, Yexer. That's the song. So I love you guys. All the steam to y'all. Six foot soldiers in the building. Shalom. Ah. Um, yada, yada, I love you guys. Um, all the steam to the most high, yada, his beloved son, Yausha, I wish you guys the best. And I'm actually going to do something I've never done. I'm going to close this out with a song. Uh, let's see. What song do I want to close it out with? Da, 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 da. All right. We're going to do it with this one. All right, family. Love y'all. Yada, yada, Abba, you all, we love you. We are your people. We esteem your name, we barak your name, for there is none like you. Hey, yek, sir. <laughs> May your ua and your usha be perpetually esteemed. We are Yasharel, we the chosen Yahudim, set apart from the world, not sexually obscene, prophetically and bold and ordinarily foreseen. May your ua and your usha be perpetually esteemed. His set apart people, yeah, we are the Kadashim. He's the only Elohim, extraordinarily supreme. I can feel his spirit, though it's verily unseen. Your ua Eloheinu, there is none like you. People say that they don't like me because they don't like you. We keep your laws and commandments to be closer to you no more looking over my shoulder i'm a soldier for you every day i'm getting older getting bolder for you the lamb's blood keeps me covered i keep passover too and you sent your son your usha just to die for my sins you correct me because you love me you provide warnings in this moment i declare it's your set apart name and your ua alu is where my heart will remain and your usha you're my king i pray you come back soon the new moon illuminated there is no black moon and collectively we seek you may we be redeemed and the world hates your people, they just hate to demean I ain't straddling the fence cause there ain't no in between Perpetually and effectively may they be esteemed May your ua and your usha be perpetually esteemed We are Yasharel, we the chosen Yahudim Set apart from the world, not sexually obscene Prophetically and bold and ordinarily foreseen May your ua and your usha be perpetually esteemed His set apart people, yeah we are the Kadashim He's the only Elohim, extraordinarily supreme I can feel his spirit though it's verily unseen Hey, Yek, sir. <laughs>